Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome, my friends. It is Friday, June 8th, 2012. I'm your host, Alex Jones, and we're going to be live here for the next three hours today. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Well, where to begin? You've noticed that I've been somewhat silent about Ron Paul and his campaign the last few months because I could read the tea leaves and tell where all of this was headed and going, and I was just going to wait to watch it unfold uh, before commenting. Because I've learned that people who are totally dedicated to something uh, and who then will perceive a betrayal do not want to hear it early. They want to be betrayed where it's completely clear, out in the open, and I thought I would stay out of the way uh, of that disaster. That said... I think Ron Paul is a good person and has a great voting record. Senator Rand Paul is a great person and has a very good voting record. I understand the politics they're involved in, and people who love Dr. No, Ron Paul's nickname for voting no on almost everything, uh, need to understand that now there's massive political capital locked up inside of Ron Paul and Rand Paul. And that now they have literally more than 30, 40 million Americans behind them. And from Ron Paul's perspective and Rand Paul's perspective, if they don't work through the Republican Party, that entire movement will just dissipate into space. I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm not saying I totally disagree with that. But I historically have a pretty good understanding of how this is going to end up. And so I'm going to tell you today where all this is going to go. On record, I have told Richard Reeves and other big Ron Paul supporters in our office that, hey, Ron Paul's great. He exposes the private Federal Reserve. He exposes how big money and, 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 and taxation gets transferred in corporate welfare. But I said, get ready he will never use those delegates to try to challenge Mitt Romney because Paul understands that the media would spin it that Ron Paul was trying to steal an election. And I said, please, to my crew and everybody else who was all lined up shocked this morning saying, you're right, you're right. I said, hey. There's no point in doing 500 Ron Paul packages a week. There's no point in endlessly covering it because it's going to be a train wreck. This is what is going to happen. Well, exactly what I said is now happening. And it's not because I'm a rocket scientist. It's because I live in the real world. Now, if you go to Infowars.com, you can see the news article that Paul Watson has done, a balanced, focused report. Ron Paul supporters decry Rand's endorsement of Romney. Majority accused Kentucky senator of selling out to Republican establishment. Now, what's happened is Ron Paul is preparing to recede, and Rand Paul is going to be making all the announcements. Rand Paul is going to be the big speaker at the RNC. That's the plan, not Ron Paul. Uh, Rand Paul may still be offered the VP slot with Mitt Romney. That's what's really going on here. Now, I want to be clear. I still reserve judgment on all of this. I understand the thought processes of Ron Paul and Rand Paul and the people advising them. I understand the process. They're looking at tens of millions of awake Americans. They're looking at the fact that the Republican establishment stole Iowa, stole uh, Maine stole Nevada. They know how the media works. They're not ever going to be able to get that message out. Even when the New York Times came out and said, yeah, Ron Paul really won these states. The system uh, even itself admitted that that happened. You noticed that Ron Paul 
did not come out and make a big issue out of it because he understood that it would be spun that he was basically a sore loser. And I'm going to shoot a special video after the show today that will air on the Nightly News where I'm going to directly address Ron Paul. But I've been exhausted from the trip being out of town at Bilderberg. I've been going to bed at about 9 o'clock at night. And so I missed the announcement last night and only got it this morning when Aaron Dykes was calling me at about 7 a.m. when I uh, woke up. I ended up getting about four hours sleep a night at Bilderberg. And so I'm simply recharging my batteries. When I actually go to bed early at night, that's, that's an Alex Jones vacation. And I got up and I just knew all this was coming. And it's going to be very, very destructive at one level. And it's going to be very disillusioning at another. And I don't think it has to be that way. I mean, I've said over and over again on air, and people are like, why aren't you covering the delegate process more? I've said, well, he's not getting anywhere near a majority of delegates, right at about 20%. And if he goes and tries to contest things, it's going to be spun that he's going against uh, what the majority wanted, even if they originally stole it from him early on. And I don't see Ron Paul doing that. I see them trying to get some things into the platform, which can be ignored and are ignored. Uh, I see maybe a cabinet position for Ron Paul or a VP for Rand. And I've said that six months ago. And that's what's being jockeyed for here right now. And so I'm open-minded on this. I know my gut doesn't like it. But I'm saying, okay, does Ron Paul just fade off? Do we just have the Kentucky Senator Rand Paul up there? Uh, does Ron Paul come out and say he doesn't like Mitt Romney? And then general Republicans, remember, this isn't three or four years ago. This is now, with everybody hating Obama, all the hate being on Obama, Obama being revealed as a globalist, that hasn't been fully revealed yet with Mitt Romney. It's the season of hating Obama. And so a lot of people are getting behind Mitt Romney just because they had Obama. Like a lot of people got behind Obama just because they hated George W. Bush. And I had to be there to say, no, Obama's bought and paid for by the very same special interest as Bush. He will expand the police state, the wars, the warrantless spying, the secret arrest, the torture. He'll keep Gitmo open. He'll hire nothing but lobbyists. He'll be more secretive. All of that happened. I made the Obama deception while he was president-elect. It came out in early March, just a few months after he was in office. And it is like you're watching someone who got in a time machine and predicted exactly what would happen. So now I need to come out, I guess, with a film called The Left-Right Deception. Or the Republican-Democrat deception. By the way, Jesse Ventura is giving us one of the first interviews, a full uh, hour on Tuesday. Uh, this officially comes out Monday, but you can order it now at InfoWars.com. Uh, it's uh, Demo Crips and Rebublicans. <laughs> he told me this name about a year ago when he started writing it. And uh, Ventura's new book, get it first, discounted at InfoWars.com. This is really the issue. If you just attack Obama, people think you hate black people. If you just attack Mitt Romney, they think, oh my gosh, you must be an insider commie. No, both of them are Maine Capital, Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo. It's the same deal. And it's just gangs that get together in their big commission meetings and scam the American people. And if you do get up to the top and don't follow orders, you get Kennedy or you get politically destroyed. And, and undoubtedly, at Bilderberg, we're talking about wanting to kill Ron Paul. Uh, at the Bilderberg meeting, according to Tucker and other sources we have, our other sources didn't confirm the stuff about wanting to kill him and his supporters. They confirmed they were cussing Ron Paul and, and, and seeing those out there protesting him as the bad guys. Ron Paul spearheaded exposing the New World Order. Ron Paul spearheaded exposing the Federal Reserve. And now Ron Paul and the Liberty Movement, through Rand ran and Ron, has all this incredible political capital. And so looking through Ron Paul and Rand Paul's eyes... Do they try to get Rand positioned in four years to, to run and win as president? Or do they get him in there as vice president or a cabinet position? That's the idea. How do they take that giant grassroots capital? And how do they take over the Republican Party? Well, I'll say this, and I'm not somebody who yells at people who are in the arena. But it's almost like they're sabotaging there the way this stuff is announced. Uh, the way they came out and said, hey, we're going to stop campaigning in these states 
and then spun it that they didn't mean it like that, that the campaign was still going. So the message was, yeah, Romney, we're quietly conceding to you, but hey, supporters, keep giving us money and get out there and get us the delegates because we're still going to win. And I was like, that's what I don't like. If you want to know what I don't like, and I'm going to talk about this more today, it's that politics was played with the constitutionalist, libertarian, Americana, patriot movement. And I sat there and I watched it and I said, is that Jesse Benton? I mean, and I said, you know, Jesse's not a bad guy, but I said, this really stinks. And I just wouldn't talk. I just went into a neutral mode and I had Salon and Washington Post and all them out there asking me about this at Bilderberg. And I just said, no, Ron Paul, Rand Paul, good. And I, and I, I said, I got to sit here and watch. Now, now, right now, uh, the jury's still out, and I'm watching this, and I'm understanding their thought processes. But I don't agree with it because, because there's no way Mitt Romney's going to bring Rand Paul in or Ron Paul in and let them actually go against the globalist agenda. This is a one-way street. The rhetoric may be that, oh, yes, you're influencing us. And I talked to high-level Republicans in the media over the weekend, I'll just leave it at that, when I was in Virginia, went out to dinner with some, and they said, listen, yeah, uh, Ron Paul ought to try to influence Mitt, because he's got a lot of good ideas, and uh, where do you stand on this? You know, Rand Paul, Ron Paul, you're not the only ones that are taken up on the mountain. And again, I'm not even saying that the people up on the mountain in every case are at the top of the mountain up there with El Diablo. This is how politics works. This is how people get sold out one inch at a time. I got a bunch of notes here I wrote right before I went live on air. I thought about this a lot this morning, but I got to go with my gut here and tell you what I really think about all this. So call everybody you know. Tell them tune in right now. Let's not let the fact that you know, Ron Paul's been a big victory, a big spearhead for us to fight the globalists, the banksters, the New World Order, the Federal Reserve, the Law of the Sea Treaty, the UN, the Rockefellers. But hey... Ideas are bigger than Ron Paul and Rand Paul. So I'm going to keep going the same direction against the New World Order. I had tried. That's the big question here. Again, the jury is out on Ron Paul and Rand Paul. I think joining with Romney openly and not challenging him as they do Obama will hurt the legacy of Ron Paul and, Ron, uh, and Rand Paul. There is no doubt in my mind politically that if Rand Paul stuck to his guns and behaved in the exact manner of his father, that he would end up being a super dominant force in the next election. And if he challenged election fraud in the states when it happened in Iowa and Maine like it happened this year, and if he got really aggressive and built a movement over four years, he could be a bully pulpit in the Senate and absolutely dominate and uh, block legislation and promote legislation, and he could end up being the president of the United States and pulling this republic out of where it's going. But I'll tell you this, if he supports Romney and gets a speaking slot or a cabinet position or his dad does, when Romney betrays the American people, just like Obama's done, and tries to have amnesty, and tries to have socialist health care, and tries to have gun control, and tries to have carbon taxes. Everything he supported before he ran for president. Remember, Ron Paul has run TV ads about this. All the flip-flopping. He's bought and paid for by Bain Capital. He's bought and paid for by Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan. Do I dislike Romney? No. Seems like a funny, charming guy. Obama seems like a funny, charming guy at certain levels. They're teleprompter readers. They're high-level minions of the New World Order. So all of this is a distraction and a diversion. That's why Ron Paul was different. It was because he was addressing the banksters, the crony capitalists who were anti-free market. He was bypassing their system. And folks, he was winning the first primaries. That's why the polls showed him first in Maine, first in Iowa. And then it was stolen they caught them stealing it. They wouldn't count the precincts where he was winning. Even the New York Times had to admit he really won Maine. And now we see Rand coming out and saying, well, I always supported my father, but now I support Mitt Romney. And I understand why they're doing that. I know Rand Paul personally. I've known Ron Paul for 17 years. They're good people. Who, who you see on TV is who they are behind the scenes. They're good people. 
But they've been too close to the beltway too long. And they have this idea of, let's not lose this political capital. Let's take over the Republican Party. That's not what happened. And all of your supporters, I knew you were going to do this. And, and I warned you guys through back channels not to do it. I warned through your family not to do it. You think you're going to go in there and influence it. It doesn't matter because the main body of your supporters, as you can see, I'm, I, again, I waited for this to happen. The main body of your supporters feel totally and completely 110% betrayed. Especially when Ron Paul says, go to Tampa and be respectful. Because Ron Paul people, when they're the majority of the delegates, the Republican leadership in Louisiana and other states is taking it and saying, no, we say the delegates go for Romney. So there's that stealing going on. And they're beating up and arresting the Ron Paul supporters. And Ron Paul comes out and puts it on the supporters and says, you need to be respectful. That's the reason I'm being somewhat critical today. That's the straw that broke the camel's back. And I better watch it or I'm going to start saying more right here. Forget trying to influence Romney to be a constitutionalist. How about we influence Ron Paul and Rand Paul to be constitutionalist? How about you listen to your supporters and not Jesse Benton? And I'm not saying Jesse Benton's the bad guy here, but let me tell you, I've been around it for six years. And Jesse Benton shouldn't be the tail wagging the dog. The first Rand Paul supporters were my radio show. The first people in his campaign when no one was there, it was grassroots, were my listeners. I've met them, I've had dinner with them, his head people. And they said, what do you think about what's happening? You know, and I said, let's wait and see. And I know Rand and Ron are good people. They're good people. And they've got great voting records. But I'm not going to sit here and watch this seduction of the Paul campaign and family without saying, hey, we don't just go wherever you go. You need to understand that. Okay? We're not here to be sold into Republican slavery uh, just because you feel like it and you guys are all getting heady in meetings with Mitt Romney and have deluded yourselves that you're just going to be able to, you know, uh, go in there and influence them. I'm going to reserve total judgment on this and I'm going to get more into this when we come back. But down the road, we're not going to forget if, 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 if Romney gets in and then there's a bunch of you know, Rand Paul defending him stuff when he's doing wrong, I'm going to come after you. So be aware of that and understand that's the case. You understand? We'll be right back. I'm going to give the number out. That he couldn't win. They stole the early states from him. And I was critical of the fact that Ron Paul didn't make a bigger deal out of that. But I understand the strategy. If you sit there and talk about proven election fraud, it sounds like you're a sore loser. I know that Rand was on with us a few months ago and said that uh, he had not talked to Romney, had not heard about it, that it was just speculation. Now he has met with him. And I would just like to see Rand Paul and Ron Paul address, this is my biggest concern here. This is what really makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. That it's always announced on Sean Hannity. That, oh, by the way, I'm endorsing, um, I'm endorsing Mitt Romney. And then Ron Paul is out there saying, now be respectful at the uh, Tampa meeting. I mean, I thought we were supposed to get the delegates and go take over. I told everybody internally, I said, they are not going to do that. That is political suicide. People are like, you'll see, Alex, you'll see. I'm like, really, I'll see. I've been on air 17 years. I happen to know a thing or two. You know, I always underestimate what I know. And then I look at people who know nothing, always lecturing me all day. And it really gets old. You know, I was meeting with a high-level Republican this weekend. And, uh, you know, nice guy, means well, has done some good work. And he's like, well, look, Obama's really bad. I mean, I know Mitt's not perfect, but Obama is really bad. You know, re-education centers. And I go, yeah, but it, it, it's this whole continuity of government isn't just the Democratic Party and, and Mr. Ayers. Or, you know, people like that out of Chicago. It's the big special interest. Everything Bush did, Obama continued. Everything Clinton did, Bush continued. And there's still, well, the public wants to change. And I understand the momentum of Obama's now been demonized. He's yesterday's, you know, lunch. He's rotten in the refrigerator. 
uh, his political capital is going down by the second. He is a negative. And here comes Mitt Romney. And you want to believe, you want to believe things could change. And I told the Republican, high-level national journalist, I said, you mark my words. You mark my words. Mitt Romney, if he gets in, is going to continue everything Obama has done, except for stuff like gay marriage, political football issues. And that may matter to you individually. Okay? The, you know, the culture wars. And I'm not saying it's not important from both sides' perspectives. But it is shoved out there to distract the fact that both parties at the top are supporting bailouts, corporate welfare, new wars, police state, and overall entitlement programs are only getting bigger. So it's an extremely complex issue, and uh, I'm not spinning. I'm trying to despin this, but I understand why the Paul family is doing what they're doing. They're going to see their political dynasty that has done so much good that's forming dissipate by a factor of, I'd say, 80% in their view if they don't try to merge with the Republican Party. But isn't that, to a great extent, what Barry Goldwater did? And he just kind of faded off. I mean, Rand Paul is going to be remembered in history and have an effect if he doesn't compromise. It was the system's dirty tricks, Republican and Democrat, that tried to keep him out of office in Kentucky that galvanized people behind him. I mean, I had Rand Paul on a year before he ran when they were just talking about it. And I said, you will win. It will happen. You've got to get everybody behind you. You've got to announce early. And, my, and I said, that's it. Listeners, send him money. Ron Paul said in 2008 on this show that half the support he had gotten in the campaign that far along, you can pull the interview up, came from this radio show. And so I have a responsibility here. I have a responsibility here to talk about these issues and tell you what I'm thinking. And the answer is I'm not sure. I want, uh, we had Lord Moncton on in the second hour today from Hawaii with big breaking news. I moved him to the third hour so we'd have a chance to talk to you. And I want to hear your points on this. Where do you see this going? We, we should have had this debate earlier, but it was just such mindless victory all of you watch, we're going to win, we're going to get the delegates from the listeners that I didn't want to you know, rain on your parade. I, I just said, I even prayed about it and said, I, I hope I'm wrong. I, I, I hope this doesn't go the way I see it. And, and that didn't even mean Rand Paul running as vice president or Rand Paul getting a cabinet position or Ron Paul or the speaking engagement there, which is a clear set deal, big speaking, you know, at the RNC, selling out for a bowl of porridge. I mean, this is nothing. That will discredit them when they're brought out and, 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 and worshiped by Mitt Romney. See, I've been all over the country in the last year or so, and I've seen zero Mitt Romney stickers. Richard Reeves, who drives constantly, he saw one in North Dallas uh, a few months ago. I still see ridiculous, moron uh, Obama stickers all over the country. I see 10% of what I saw three years ago. But three years ago, they were festooning everything as if it was the second coming of Christ or something. And just gullible morons. And I'm sorry, I just can't be a, a sucker, a schmuck, an idiot, a dupe, a useful moron, uh, an idiot. I mean, I, I, I just, I can't stand it. Now, I want to believe that Mitt Romney patting Ron Paul and patting Rand on the head means he, he wants to be a good guy. But that's all politics. I want to believe him saying he supports the Second Amendment and is against Obamacare and against carbon taxes. I want to believe that that's the truth. I want this nightmare to end. I want things to start reversing. I told the big um, Republican journalist, I said, look, in an off-record meeting, I said, I would tacitly not attack Mitt Romney as, as much if he would just reverse 20%. I mean, if we could just not go directly off the cliff, if the TSA stopped going down our pants, uh, if they didn't, you know, increase them, and if he didn't do carbon taxes. But I said, you mark my words. When he gets in there, they're going to launch more wars, more police state, all sorts of weird tricks. Romney loves tricks, dressing up as policemen his life, pulling people over, doing weird stuff. I mean, let me tell you, it's going to get weird. It's going to get strange, and it's going to get just as bad or worse with Obama. I understand that. But wouldn't it be better to have Obama in? 
because we know he's evil. Everybody's already woken up. He's a piece of garbage. Most people, they know he's a puppet. They know he's a liar instead of a new puppet. I mean, worse is better sometimes. And I'm not going to support Obama. I cannot support Mitt Romney. Because just because he says he supports the Bill of Rights and Constitution, just because he says that he uh, is, is now reversing himself from all of his voting record as governor and all of his, I mean, I've got videos of him saying, I support abortion because my mother did and I'll always support it. And then now he says he's against it. I mean, he was for abortion in Massachusetts. He was for open borders. He was for carbon taxes. He was for, he wrote the model of the health care we're now under. Of course, big insurance company scam to make 35 million people buy insurance. And now insurance companies can control the care you get. That's a death panel. And let me tell you, Mitt Romney gets in. That's why the globalists more and more are, are going for Romney. I, I see political coming out against Obama. I see the Washington Post kind of bad-mouthing Obama. They're turning against Obama right now because they go, oh my gosh, he was going to be our man, but it didn't work. Put Romney in. That'll make the libertarians and conservatives go to sleep, especially if Ron and Rand Paul get behind him. Ladies and gentlemen, Ron and Rand Paul, you may have some strategy that you think is going to get you in there and that you understood you couldn't use the delegates. It would look like you were stealing the election, so you're going to try to get a speaking slot in a cabinet position or something or Rand on the ticket. Let's say you do that. Let's say they let you have some rhetoric about constitutional ideas. You'll just be used as a shield to co-op. They know you were the front runners. They know you, you, you came from nowhere in Kentucky. They know Ron Paul was really winning. They know that. There isn't any support for Romney that I see out there. Okay, by conservatives, libertarians, constitutionalists, real conservatives. Okay, there isn't the support. So they need Ron Paul. They need Ron Paul. You don't need them. And again, all the staff are in there because they want the big Republican jobs. They want to secure their dynasties, the, the people working for Ron Paul and the rest of them. And they're all there saying, hey, Papa Paul, don't go, you know, retire at your farm in South Texas. You know, get us into the Republican Party. And uh, you're going to regret those 30 pieces of silver if that ends up what's happening. I understand the arguments, I understand the reasons. My gut, my gut tells me this is a bad idea and that this is not going to end well. I asked Aaron Dykes during the break, who's beside himself right now, uh, and uh, yeah, it's like somebody dropped a bomb on the office. I'm like, what did you think was going to happen? They're all like, yes, you're right as usual. I'm not smart, folks. I'm just not gullible. I've got street smarts. And he said, Ron Paul has blown his foot off, and now if he goes ahead with this, he's going to politically shoot himself in the head. And I said, I absolutely agree with you. Even if Ron Paul's right that you go in, you influence Romney, that's only going to be on the surface because the big banks that have paid for Mitt Romney and the media that attacked and demonized Ron Paul and all the rest of them, they're going to turn on you later anyways. And you're not going to have your supporters anymore. Campaign for Liberty, we have sat here and watched this happen. And I watched Adam Kokesh start going after Paul a few weeks ago. And I said, he's probably right, but I'm going to hold back. And to be clear, I still am not giving my judgment on this. I'm letting the entire Paul system know that you better come out in a press conference and you better address your supporters because the way they let the supporters think that they were really going to contest the delegates when I knew they weren't. And I was like, okay, I guess uh, maybe Paul's going to do something I don't know of. But you've, you've heard me on air. I've said some of this, but tried to hold back. National media came to me and said, we've noticed you've been saying little things. What, what do you want? I'm like, you just want to drive a wedge. No, Ron Paul and Rand Paul are great. And then... There's almost no communication because they know the minute they really can see this, they have to concede to Romney to get the momentum behind him to get Romney behind him. You know, they're being told, okay, you want Rand on the ticket or you want you know, this or that. You've got to concede. So they concede in the media on Hannity a few, you know, a month ago, but then say, oh, no, that really wasn't conceding. No, 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 no. We're going to, we just weren't going to spend money in those states. I'm like, yeah, but this looks like it. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll buy that. I'll, I'll have faith in people I've, I've, I've had faith in for 17 years. I'll, I'll do that. But danger Will Robinson behind the scenes, I was just like, 
man, I got a responsibility. And I do have a responsibility. If you guys go south on us, I'm coming after you politically. You better know that. So you, people are saying we ought to have Ron Paul and Rand Paul influence Romney. That's like having uh, Obama supporters try to influence him. Ain't going to happen. Okay? They're up there in that beltway, ladies and gentlemen. And again, some will say, well, hey, why even go after him? Let him kind of merge with Romney. And, you know, the argument there is, hey, they're going to be pro-gun, anti-Federal Reserve, and anti-war on um, many levels. And so why not just go along with it? All I'm saying is the supporters are not buying this. I got to say, the email, the comments we're seeing, 85% are hopping mad. And let me tell you, they're not going to go away. I mean, it's, it's one thing, it, 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 you know, with Romney or Obama when they, when, when they betray sheep. But you betray constitutionalists. If you betray them or if it's perceived... And this is exactly what the globalists want. It's why I haven't taken the bait when national media has called me or come out to events I'm at and said, oh, do a big feature story on you about the Pauls. Are they betraying? I'm like, no, they're not betraying any. And they throw out all the betrayals, you know, or what looks like betrayals. And I'm like, oh, well, I, I don't see that yet. I'm going to keep my mind open. And so I've sat there just watching this, this unfold. And again... I'm not going to tell you how the cow ate the cabbage here, uh, but here it is. Ron Paul supporters decry Rand's endorsement of Romney. Majority accused Kentucky senator of selling out to Republican establishment. <sighs> Man, this is really hurts bad. And this is the, Bob Chapman was always with us on Fridays. He died Monday. What a and he, you know you have the great news of Bilderberg being blown wide open and all this happening. You know the good news is Liberty marches on and all. Here's the good news. All of Ron Paul's work has been so effective and good against the globalists. It's been beautiful. It's been wonderful. And I, I guess this is just success. I mean, he was really going to be the real nominee. They stole it. Now they want him. And why shouldn't he go and try to have some influence? See, I get it. I get it. I get it. But my gut that's never wrong tells me they've fallen into a trap. That's what I want to say. That's what I'm trying to get out here. There's so much spin on this by the media and, the, and, and, and others that I'm trying to hit it with, with my system to unspin it. Rand Paul endorses Romney. We have the video clip in case you don't think this really happened. Uh, here's the Austin Chronicle. Ron Paul supporters. Ron Paul concedes defeat. Ask supporters to be respectful in Tampa. I mean, I've seen countless videos of Ron Paul supporters getting arrested and getting beat up when they are the majority delegates and the Republicans change the rules in front of them. The rules they passed in 2010, they say, well, now those are in 2014, the next congressional election. And they, and they beat them up and drag them out. And then Ron Paul says, be respectful. Direct talking points out of Romney and the RNC. That, that's like a punch in the stomach, man. That, 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 that hurts. But I'm going to be controlled about this, and I'm going to analyze it. And then if it is the case, I am going to, I am going to absolutely get the American people motivated. I'm just going to leave it at that. And again, I read that. Uh, let, let, we're going to go to break and come back. The toll-free number to join us, 800-259-9231. Uh, I'm going to go ahead right now and play you part of Fox News, Sean Hannity, New World Order Central, the folks that told you the New World Order doesn't exist, and you know, all the rest of it, uh, the people that demonize Ron Paul 24-7 and cheat him on the polls and everything. It, it, this reminds me of Robert the Bruce, this really happened in history, who had all the clans united to defeat the uh, British, and then he sold everybody out and sold William Wallace out. And I guess he realized it later and came back and actually defeated the British. But, I mean, this is exactly like Braveheart. I, I, I was having flashbacks this morning to that. You maintain your title, expanded your lands, you've done well. You survived. You don't survive tyranny. Things are too dark. They're launching drones, re-education camps. We got to get hardcore, not work with the system anymore. Let's go ahead and go to the tape. Here it is. Right. That's more than 90% right there. What does that come out to? 69 divided into 952. What is that? More than 95% don't like it. 
So I, I think this is a major miscalculation. But what did you expect? They kept everybody going, telling them they were going to win with delegates. While Rand came on this show a couple months ago and said, well, yes, um, you know, now that we're moving forward, implying Romney was the guy. And, and, and why is it Rand making this announcement on Hannity? Again, maybe they've got some plan I don't know about. They, their voting records are great, so I, I still support them. I still like Rand Paul. Uh, but I'm telling you, this is not going to go over well with the supporters. Who a lot of them would look at me and say, he's going to be president even over the weekend. And I said, no, he's not. He's only got 20% of the delegates, and that would be suicide to try to contest it. I said, you watch, he isn't. They'd say, say that on tape. And I'd say, no, I'm not. I'm going to let you experience this for yourself. And because I just understand basic politics. Now, again, I understand the poll position. Hey, might as well try to influence Romney. Might as well, that's what they're being told. You know, hey, you know, Romney will listen to you. Get behind Romney. Because there's, no, there, there's no Romney road signs. There's no Romney bumper stickers. If you've seen one, tell me about it. All I saw driving across this country was Ron Paul signs. This is the tail wagging the dog. This is a little Republican tail that had to cheat, that, that, that treated Ron Paul supporters like trash. And let me tell you, this morning I was going to come out and say, well, let's just wait and see till I saw the Paul quote in the Houston Chronicle. And I saw it in their email they put out. Didn't just believe them, saying, be respectful in Tampa. What? Be re I mean, so, you know, be respectful. Does that translate to sit down and shut up? Again, my point is, I'm now in a stance of, I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm not going to just sit here and go, oh, well, you know, 17 years of me trusting somebody. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I know we got loaded phones here. We'll have nothing but open phones the next hour. Then Lord Monkton's coming on. I got a bunch of other news I haven't even gotten to yet. I'm going to try to get to more of that. But uh, Justin in Missouri, what's your take on all this? Should I just get behind Romney and, and, and maybe George Bush too? No, not at all. And this is what I meant. I called you about six, seven months ago uh, during the debates. I saw what was coming. I mean, because it was obvious that they weren't attacking each other. They were having meetings behind closed doors. I mean, you know, and I'm just completely... Well, they said they weren't. They said they weren't. And if I find out a year down the road or something when one of their people shoots their mouth off, if I found out they lied to us, all hell's going to break loose. You go ahead. Yeah, that's what I was telling you when I called before, that I would take every one of the subscribers I've got and I'll just turn every gun I have against them on, uh, on the videos I'm making. I mean, because that, that's just it's ridiculous. Well, let's not do that yet. I mean, Ron Paul and Rand Paul need to respond. And that doesn't even mean on my show. Quite frankly, when they come on my show, I don't even get extra listeners. I, people want to hear my commentary, my analysis. Uh, I mean, I haven't even been trying to get them on the last three, four months. Salon was asking, hey, where's Ron Paul? I'm like, well, we tried a few times to get him on. They said they would come on later. They were busy. Fine. Doesn't matter to me. You know, I'm doing them a favor having them on my show. This show was the original launch pad out of Texas for these guys. Ron Paul's admitted that. So, you know, again, I haven't even attempted to get them on the show. They need to come on shows or do a press conference and explain all this to us. I'm going to have a message I'm going to shoot later today that will be up at YouTube tonight at InfoWars.com. And it's, it's going to be a message directly to these guys. And I want to hear my points answered. This is all just a brainstorm session with you on air. But let me tell you. We may not fully understand what they're doing. They need to make it clear to us. Because th what they've done has gone over like a Led Zeppelin. Looking down for the last hour, the fact that Ron Paul says to supporters, be polite and go give your delegates to Mitt Romney. After just keeping them the momentum and the donations and everything going, now merge with Mitt Romney. And uh, Rand coming out in a coordinated fashion endorsing Mitt Romney. Uh, they need to explain themselves uh, on this front. This is what I saw in their political strategy, but not what they put out to their supporters. And, and, and it's the political way this was done and the way the supporters were used as pure capital that is the reason I'm being somewhat negative. I still res respect their voting records, respect both men, support them over the gun-grabbing New World Order people uh, that are uh, in office they're fighting. But we need clear messages. You see, the message of liberty is starting to really have an effect and hit pay dirt. We're starting to really win. 
And we don't need to see, you know, Anakin Skywalker go over to Emperor Palpatine here. I mean, we really don't need to see this right now. Uh, let's uh, go back to your phone calls. Let's go to John in Wyoming. You're on the air, John. What do you think of this? Yeah, Alex, uh, when I lived in southeast Texas, now I've known Ron Paul personally for 38 years, and I'm just, I have the same gut feeling that you do about this thing. This whole thing stinks of a sellout. Now, let me tell you two things that have happened in his campaign that seem like deliberate sabotage. First of all, I still have a lot of friends and relatives living in the Houston area, although I'm way up here in Sheridan, Wyoming. And all of my friends and relatives were saying that why the heck did Ron not tour through Houston and Harris County when he was campaigning? For no, 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 Texas no, no. Party. You notice even before Texas and other key states, he said, we're no longer going for delegates. We're no longer going in these states. That are, and I'm like, you could have won Texas. I saw that and I said, oh, no, no, don't give over. Don't don't kneel to the dark side. And then now this, I mean, how many more? I mean, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. Well, that's another key point right there. I'm writing that down. You're right. Did not campaign hard in Texas. Yeah, there's another key point is I noticed that he was not speaking at the NRA convention in St. Louis. And then at first I thought, well, the NRA didn't invite him. But when I called him, they said, John, we invited all of the Republican candidates. But for some reason, Ron did not accept. And I called Ron's campaign headquarters in Virginia, and I said, what's going on here? And they gave me a bunch of Weasley remarks as to why Ron didn't speak. I said, I would have personally driven, because I've been a life member of the NRA since 78. I said, I would have personally driven from Sheridan, Wyoming, to St. Louis to introduce Ron. Now, that would have been an press. absolute key to speak at that. I mean, so many Republican candidates do. It was insane. Listen. I mean, I'll tell you, the last few months when our listeners call up supporting and even trying to give money, they'll get little snide remarks about me if my name's brought up. That never happened before. I mean, I wonder who is in that campaign now. I mean, it, it, I mean, is it Bill Clinton running it or something? Well, the whole point is Ron was the only real pro-gun candidate who would have been embraced by the NRA membership and, and gun owners all over the country, and yet he blew that golden opportunity. He didn't show up. And no, he no, no. Instead, it was all about campaign for liberty and the idea of liberty on campuses, which I know is effective and good. But listen, he didn't just, he stopped doing a lot of big syndicated shows that were his bread and butter about four months ago. Uh, I tell you, I look, before I was just kind of, Hey, it doesn't matter. He's not going to win now. Let folks be delusional about the delegate thing. I knew we had to cross this bridge, and I thought, please don't, don't do what my gut tells me is about to happen. And and I tell you, like you said, my gut. This is maybe it's threats. You know, they called up uh, in the early '90s. They called up Ross Perot and said, "We're going to kill your daughter and your family." And he 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 was going to win. Imagine Ron Paul should have run third party to inject real ideas. He'd have gotten fifty million dollars. That would have that would have built a new third rail in this country, but it didn't happen. What's your final analysis? You, you, what's your gut tell you on this one, uh, John? I think, Alex, we're being sold out, and why, I don't know, and I don't know if we'll ever know, but something is happening to sell us out. Yeah, it's probably the VP slot. <laughs> As all of our listeners know... I absolutely love Ron Paul and his incredible voting record, his philosophy of constitutional limited government, his incredibly uh, positive voting record that is perfect. Rand Paul, who I encourage to run, my listeners were the first to give him money, the first to staff his original staff. I know he's a good man. And I understand why, if you have Romney approach him and talk about a cabinet slot for Ron Paul or VP for Rand, and I know that's being debated and up in the air and they're having private meetings, I understand how they could say to themselves, well, let's take over the Republican Party or part of it with the giant liberty movement. But that's not what happens in politics. Mitt Romney is bought and paid for. His voting record, his fruits, abortion, open borders, gun control, carbon taxes, wrote Obamacare, it's really O-Romney-Care or Rombama-Care. I don't know how you combine their two names. O-Romney-Care. That, that's not really going to happen. You know, the question is, can you push Romney to be good? I, I can't stand Barack Obama. I wish Mitt Romney was for real. But 
here's the deal. I can't go down with the sinking campaign for liberty ship. I can't do it. I mean, if it's just going to be taken over by a bunch of slightly libertarian Republicans, uh, when our country is having its entire Bill of Rights and Constitution overthrown, a technocracy is coming in, I cannot and I will not go down with that sinking ship. And let me tell you, we're on over 100 stations, XM 166. If you just joined us, I'm Alex Jones, Syndicated Radio. We're live. It is Friday, the 8th day of June, 2012. I cannot go down with my family with the Romney ship. Now, I'm not in overdrive attacking Romney. You notice it's Obama saying he's going to sign executive orders to put us under U.N. control with law of the sea. It's Obama going into hyper warp with checkpoints and police state and TSA. If Romney got in and suddenly shut down the TSA or got rid of the body scanners and did cut taxes and shut down some bases, I'd go, wow, well, the elite has figured out we're going to collapse if they don't back off. Well, uh, Romney's kind of like Reagan, uh, you know, but again, I reserve judgment on that until I see something different. I don't just, oh, I oppose Obama because I, you know, uh, I thought you didn't like Bush. Why don't you like Obama? Because he's bought and paid for by the same people. Look at his advisors. Look who's giving him money. I knew what he was going to do. Not because I'm smart, but because I'm not an idiot. I'm not an idiot. I'm not a moron. I mean, is that hard to figure out? How many times? We have, a, we have an illustration hanging on the wall. Uh, in fact, Aaron just Twittered it out. He took a photo of it. Guys, will, will, will you go to the real Alex Jones? I asked him to Twitter it, uh, tweet it during the last break. And it shows a pyramid that's the New World Order with a red leg and a blue leg. The blue leg's the Democrats, the red leg's the Republicans. And each election, one of the legs steps forward and crushes the constituents. That's an analogy I talked about for over a decade. Folks have picked that up and put it into an illustration. We wanted to create a new leg or two new legs of libertarian constitutionalism to take America back. Now, there it is. We can blow that up, actually. Just click on the photo. Thank you. That's hanging on our wall here in the office. Left, right, left, right. Next time I'll vote Democrat, the Republican says, as they're being stepped on. Next time I'll vote Republican, the Democrat says, as they're being stepped on. And so it goes on forever while the mainstream corporatist media belches out its propaganda. It's called the March of Tyranny by Ben Garrison. <clears throat> And there you have it, up at The Real Alex Jones on Twitter. So I'm going to try to shut up and go back to your calls. But, you know, these emails are pouring in. Has Romney turned against the New World Order? Question mark. Are Easter bunnies real? I don't know. Is Santa Claus real? Last time I checked, no. What if the Mormons, Amish, etc. have turned against the New World Order and are secretly trying to defeat them? Why did most of the Mormons I've seen are supporting Ron Paul? Why did Clinton come out to be Annie Romney because the Clintons through blackmail run Obama. Why is LaRouche seeming to be pro-Romney and anti-Obama? Because they see it as a signal if we get rid of Obama to the world that things are changing. Only if it's an impeachment, though. The devil has so many devious scams up his sleeve. I'm sure it's all planned by God regardless. If they come out, maybe they'll blow their cover, but they need to unite and say, Romney, Ron Paul, Rand are here to double-cross the New World Order. Uh, that sounds like delusion. Here's another one from Ernie. I think they probably have been threatened. Uh, think so? We get threatened on a daily basis. Yes, undoubtedly. Ron Paul entered a very dangerous realm where he really was winning the early primaries. Then when they stole it from him, people thought, well, he's not really going to win. Momentum did shift to Romney, but again, there's no hype behind him. Because they know that conservatives are like, this guy has a bad record. I mean, do you need me to play the clips of him endorsing abortion? I've always supported abortion or gun control or any of it. I mean, look, I just want a future. I'm not just here to oppose people. So many people we had on as guests uh, endorsed Obama. And I would still have them on as guests, people like Mike Rivero. Because I understood that they really wanted to believe that things were going to get better, like children. And then, of course, I forgave folks when I was proven right again that Obama sold everybody out. But I understood why people wanted to believe that Obama was a good guy. But I'm like, I'm sorry, it's not the case. <sighs> the way they announced this, the way Ron Paul said in his own press release, you know, you need to be respectful, Ron Paul supporters 
who've been beat up and everything else when they're the majority, when they've really won, when they're the delegates, and the Republican leadership no, says, no, we're, we're taking the delegates and changes the rules, and people say, no, 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 and the police beat them up. The answer is you go and you sit there as our good little block and you support Romney. And is it better to get Romney in than Obama? Or is it better because we know Obama's bad, he's been discredited to keep him in and just so we can impeach him. And so we can fully, with more libertarian types, take control of the House and Senate. Because you know what happens when Republicans get the House, Senate, and the executive. Can you imagine? They love the drones. They love the NDAA. They love handing control over to the UN. Another thing, Ron Paul hardly talked about Senator uh, Congressman Walter Jones's bill to impeach. That should have been his number one issue. We'd try to get those questions into Paul at press conferences, and they'd say, nope, nope, no more questions. I mean, it's like, come on, use the bully pulpit you've got. Ron Paul should be out there campaigning right now for impeachment, right now to fight the New World Order. And again, I've held my tongue, and I reserve judgment, but our listeners are hopping mad, and you did this to yourself. All the little campaign people that work for Ron and Rand who think they're going to get all the big jobs in the White House now, their average age is about 25, and they're mainline Republicans. They're mainline Republicans. And again, we can't have Lou Rockwell go down with the ship. I'm not going down with the ship. Not going down with the ship. Let me just give you a little news flash. I'm not going down with the ship. And right now, you just blew holes in the bottom. You better do a press conference and patch those holes right now. And explain to us why you played everybody along that you were going to get the delegates and some miracle was going to happen when we all knew it wasn't. Because it kept the donations going. It kept building the power block to get the princeling in. We don't want a princeling. We want Ron Paul. We want Rand Paul to act like Ron Paul. And he has a good voting record. He's done good things. Don't screw it up. Okay, I'm ranting. I'm ranting here, ladies and gentlemen. It's the whole way this has been handled. I don't like it. Sean, you're on the air. Go ahead. You're listening on WWCR Global Shortwave. What's your take on all this? Am I wrong? Should I get behind Mitt Romney? Should I get behind Bain Capital? Should I get behind the New World Order? You're 100% right, uh, Alex. I had some uh, uh, quick points I wanted to make, but now I've got to uh, uh, talk on some of the points you've just made. You use the word forceful. There's always been a problem with Ron Paul, and even the kid ran. When I watched on television... Rand Paul accept his nomination in Kentucky. He talked about constitutional principles and this and this. And he walked around this quote by Jefferson, and I kept saying, why doesn't he just say this quote? And this is where constitutionalists, and I've been in this movement since 83 in the West, uh, get hung up all the time. Let no more be heard of confidence in men, but bind him down from mischief by the change of the Constitution. This is 1980 in the inverse. Where, where you had a, a candidate like Ron Paul talking about the gold standard, talking about constitutional uh, principles, and he was subverted uh, or uh, uh, sabotaged in Detroit uh, by the establishment, and, and he actually picked somebody who was part of the Council on Foreign That's Relations. That's right. Ronald Reagan, on record, was anti-New World Order, gave speeches, said George Herbert Walker was trilateral, was a globalist, and they came to him, and this is on record, and said, this came out in the news, you will not get it unless you put George Herbert Walker on. And then they shot Reagan to get him under control. Go ahead. You're absolutely right. And we've talked before. I was one of the people, I was 19 years old, and I saw this with my own eyes. And when you th see things in life, like Bob Chapman, who I had the pleasure of talking to uh, once, and you see how strong the, um, the establishment is, you, you never forget it. A couple other things. I talked with Sheriff Mack about uh, five weeks ago. Perhaps you should have him on the program because he was telling me some negative things that were going on within the campaign in southeast Texas. Uh, the other, you, he, you hit uh, Ron Paul's campaign. Well, let me go further. He's got Ted Cruz in there who actually voted for tax increases. I was looking at his voting record, and they're calling him great at Ron Paul rallies. His wife, CFR. I'm going to shut up right now. I just have been holding my tongue, hoping, and it's just like, now I've got to go through everything and, and really do a real analysis. Because I cannot ever bow to anything but liberty. I will not be part of this. I, I just have to say it. Go ahead. 
Yeah, let me make two, uh, two other points, and I'll end this because I could go on and on with you. I agree with you 100%. You know, you said a thing about the Mormons. The Mormons in the West, now I used to be a Catholic, and there's a, I no longer am. I'm a Christian, but there's a term Catholic and a non-practicing Catholic. In the West here, and you probably know, there's a, the, a, you're a Mormon or a Jack Mormon. Uh, Romney is a way to way out there being a Jack Mormon. The real Mormons, this this Romney is not in the mold of a Cleon Skousen, a Joel Skousen. You 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 and I agree on that. And uh, you know, it's going to come down to a fight. That's what ultimately is coming down. To. Well said. More calls straight ahead. Even got on air an hour ago, an hour and a half ago. The Washington Examiner had already put out an article. Ron Paul fans attack Rand for endorsing Romney. So they're already going to go, oh, mainline Republicans. Oh, see, Rand and Ron are good. The evil Alex Jones people, my fans. See, see now, you're not a human. When you go out and complain on the web and, 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 and have a view as a Ron Paul supporter that gave money and were involved, you're trash. The system just wants us to tear each other apart. Look, Ron and Rand have done overall a great job fighting the globalist. It's just sad to see stuff like this happening. Uh, and uh, it says, Ron Paul fans attack Rand for endorsing Romney. Fans of the Ron Paul revolution were not happy with his son ran after an endorsement last night on Sean Hannity's show. Paul explained that although his first choice was always his father, he insisted that he had a lot in common with Romney who uh, signaled to him that he was serious about a number of government reforms. But the backlash on Senator Paul's Facebook page was fierce as the vocal supporters of Ron Paul Revolution took to the comment section to denounce his son. As of this morning, 2,000 comments were posted. A majority of them negative. Supporters blasted Rand Paul for selling out the legacy of his father, the Republican establishment. A few fans um, approved of Rand's discussion. And again, the Google search had my name in it. I don't see where that is here. Let me control F this. They may have taken it out. Now, there it is. Uh, it goes on. Um, I wish these nut jobs would just unsubscribe on the page. Go listen to Alex Jones and eat paint chips. I will not support Mitt, but I am not going to blast Rand. So uh, they go on and use comments in there to uh, try to make me sound bad. So there, there you go. I'm the bad guy, as usual, uh, in these uh, comments from the Republican uh, establishment type publication who just wants to get us all all fighting with each other. So that's going to be the word from them. You just need to roll over, do whatever you're told, and be respectful uh, at the thing and, and, and support Mitt Romney. So there you have it. I mean, that could have been done a little bit better. Like, I think overall, you know, he's not perfect, but we should support Mitt Romney because he at least is better than Obama. No, it's like you be respectful. And so, okay, I'm respectful. I'll support Mitt Romney, yes, sir, and I'll go eat some paint chips now um, because, <laughs> man, I tell you, and it just goes on and on. The Daily Beast is reporting on it. Uh, a whole bunch of them are, uh, there you go, the wedges are going in from the controlled left and controlled right right now, and you either support Mitt Romney or you're a bad American. Get that through your head. Now, again, here we are, Ron Paul, who put out ads saying Mitt Romney was bad and all this. His son is out there endorsing him because why both their dads ran for president. And again, I like Rand. I'm not his enemy. I mean, even if he starts playing politics, he's got a better voting record than the other senators. I don't spend my time going after DeMint. He's not perfect, but he's got a good voting record on a lot of issues. My point is, is that this is the pureness of Ron Paul we're talking about here, and people aren't going to like it. So they're going to try to find somebody they find polarizing. That's clear. Alex Jones and say, oh, see, without me even going after him before this even happened. Well, first it was Alex Jones fans. That was the original headline. Look, I found it right here. I put Alex Jones, Rand Paul in, a uh, Ron Paul, and click news. And uh, it, oh, I just hit re refresh and it went from Alex Jones Fans attack. They said, no, that's even better. Drive the wedge. Make it Ron Paul. <laughs> they just changed that for the time I hit refresh. Amazing. They said, no, 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 no. Don't make it about Alex Jones. Make it a wedge in the family. See, they want to hurt this liberty movement. Look, Ron Paul's done a great job. Overall, libertarian constitutional movement. It's just this is a bad move. They've really walked directly into the trap. And I bet Mitt Romney doesn't even 
give them what they promised. I bet they discharge them. But by then, they'll be politically destroyed. I just, you've got to think Ron Paul and Rand Paul are more sophisticated than this. And I see a lot of uncoordination. I've been told by the older members of the campaign, these senior people, but they're not running things on the ground, that, hey, it's 25-year-olds. They don't know what they're doing. Every one of them has told me this off record. And I'm like, well, that's grassroots. But this, this isn't just stepping in it. This is jumping into it and rolling in it after you know what you're rolling in. I'm going to go to break. Long segment coming up. I'm going to control myself. I, I, well, I just saw this go from Alex Jones fans attack Rand Paul for endorsing Romney. That was the Washington Examiner headline. And then it changed by the time I went back and hit refresh to Ron Paul fans attack Rand for endorsing Romney. Did you guys have a screenshot of that before they changed it? So you did. So you did see what I saw where it said Alex Jones fans. Yeah, well, I can't get, I didn't read it as you didn't read it. You're not sure. We'll have to find out later because you went to it after I'd already clicked on the article. Amazing. Well, we'll see if you were able to catch that. I saw that. Wow. Well, good. At least I'm not going to get to blame for all this. <laughs> Ron Paul, he did it. He's bad. His evil supporters got in the way of the little darling Rand. This is a terrible thing. Give that baby some more porridge. I mean, that's how they're going to try to spin this. Rand Paul ran a maverick campaign, didn't flinch. They pulled out every dirty trick. The same Republican establishment he's trying to get in bed with right now. Your call's coming up. Election 2012, Mitt Romney is being crowned the nominee before the convention. Ron Paul has said be respectful of the event in Tampa. And so I say, I agree, kneel to Romney. And the new spin is going to be, you're a bad conspiracy theorist, someone that doesn't trust known liars, if you don't fully do what you're told. And all the people that are part of the Ron Paul infrastructure and Rand Paul infrastructure are undoubtedly being told, you get with the program, those that are against this are ex cathedra They are excommunicated. They are bad. Well, listen, we built Ron Paul, we made Rand Paul, and liberty will continue and go on. And I'm not saying that they're bad people. They've done a lot of good work. But I have seen an attempt by the Campaign for Liberty and others to bring in mainline Republican candidates and just kind of give them the name of, you know, the certification of Ron Paul certified, like Mr. Cruz, Ted Cruz, Mr. CFR here in Texas, who's been for tax increases and supporting property taxes and all of it. When I heard all this, I didn't believe it. And I went and looked it up and I was like, wow, well, maybe they're just not researching. Well, maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But now the endorsing of Romney, when through the campaign, people were told, get more delegates. We're going to contest it. We've got a secret plan. And I was like, that's not going to work. And then to watch all this happen and, and you know, to see the announcement, oh, we're not going to campaign in these states but we'll still try to get delegates. But that's not conceding. And, uh, oh, we're still moving forward. It was a strategy to keep the, the, the donations coming in, all of that, while cozying up to Romney. Whereas it should have been Paul and Rand charging in there, contesting it all to really get concessions. But again, we're not sure about all this yet. My listeners, we've, you've been hearing their calls, are unanimous. Uh, I mean, 95% or more are feel betrayed. Folks, let's not let the globalists play this into a big deal and all have a big fracture and turn it into a big rout. We've exposed the Federal Reserve, the New World Order. We're moving forward. Uh, we can use the Campaign for Liberty system to wake people up, at least the remnants of it. Uh, Rand Paul still got a great voting record compared to the other ones. But this, this, this does take the sheen off. You know, they've always tried to, that the polls were... You know, you know, never selling out. This, this is a bad move, the way this was done. And we have to tell them that or they'll keep going down this, this path. Forget trying to influence Romney, who's bought and paid for forever. How about we try to influence Ron Paul and Rand Paul? Bring them back to earth here. We could give their numbers out on air. Give me Rand Paul and Ron Paul's uh, numbers, please. Bring those in. The Senate number. Bring me the Ron Paul campaign number in Virginia. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to even do that. I, I, I just, I'll, I'll wait on that. But I mean, you know, because we're just those paint chip eaters. You know, we, we're just those people that put them on the map. We're just the people that brought them to the party. We're just the, we're not all the young little Republican purebreds, you know, in there thinking of their dreams of being big shots uh, in there at the campaign headquarters. We're just those scum Americans that gave our money. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Bruce in New York. You're on the air, Bruce. Welcome. God bless you. 
Um, there's two points I want to make, and one is extremely urgent. Um, I had received a warning about Obama prior to him even being chosen to be uh, president. This warning was given to me through a newsletter dated March 2008, and this person that received this warning, I don't know if you believe in dreams and visions, but he received it. Ma'am, ma'am, we're taking calls. We don't screen calls, but every once in a while I say, we're covering Ron Paul, Rand Paul, election 2012. Okay, D did you call in about that? This is important because it's about Obama, and if he gets back into office, what's going to happen? That's why I'm reading this. Okay, I know what you're okay, talking okay, about. Okay, I got you. Obama's going to be the devil if we don't get Romney in. Is that the long and short of it? Oh, no, no. It, no. What the long and short is is that Obama is going to outlaw Christianity and bring in the nation of Islam. And to back that up, there is a, um, a, a speaker, Israeli speaker, called Avi Lipkin, who has intelligent information through his wife. All right, ma'am, God bless you. I appreciate your call. Send me that info. If Obama tried to ban Christianity, which they're trying to do incrementally, banning crosses, telling the Catholic Church, you got to, you know, hire people that aren't Catholic, you got to pay for abortions, that would cause a restoration through peaceful revolution overnight. Bring it on. Let's get it worse quicker. Let's wake people up. That's why they want Romney in now to put everybody back to sleep, just like I said with Obama. They want to change horses. Adrian in Michigan, you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, hello. Hey, buddy. Uh, well, last week I was hoping to call in about delegates, but at this point it seems about pointless. Uh, well, I suppose all I can say is that there's no way Rand will become the VP. There's no way Ron will become uh, any cabinet position. Uh, simply put, if you're going to become part of the elite, uh, they run like a mafia. You're going to have to sell out. You're going to have to... Uh, go through their initiation, you're going to have to either commit a crime or disclose personal information that can destroy you. Absolutely. Uh, that's what, And maybe blackmail's going on. Uh, if not of Ron, uh, who's very pious, but maybe of Rand. I'm not saying that. Who knows? But the point is, liberty is bigger than just the Paul name. And Paul has always humbly said that. So has Rand. Their voting records are good. This is just... Uh, Again, their mindset is, what do we do with all this political capital? Might as well try to influence Romney. But the way it's been done, all of it, is not going to sit well with people. You sound pretty upset right now. Yes, I am. And I agree that uh, it is much bigger than Ron Paul. And that's because we all stand by an idea, and we or stand behind an idea, and we stand by Ron Paul and that idea. And I hope that... Ron Paul does change his strategy and support uh, our uh, principles here. Well, that's right. I mean, this is a very dangerous game they're playing of trying to get Rand in there. That's clearly what's going on at some high level or maybe even Paul. And, and they're going to be set up. And it's only, imagine, they, they, they get the Ron Paul movement broken up and discredited and then betray them. And I'm predicting that's what's going to come out of this. And I'm sick of it. You know, that's when I went haywire against Deborah Medina when she came out and agreed that it was despicable, you know, 9-11 truthers when she'd said it should be investigated. It's betrayal that I won't put up with. If Ron Paul was only 95% right, when he's about 99% right in my view, and, and, and I didn't totally agree with him, that'd be fine. It's when you make 180 degree changes and... Okay, you were going to be a delegate. Ted Anderson's one of the big you know, main state delegates from Minnesota. I should get him on the show. When you're a big delegate and you're involved in all this, I mean, was the campaign not implying like you guys were going to take over and do something with the delegates and now you're just being told, go give them to, uh, you know, go give them to uh, Romney? Uh, I'm not completely sure about Paul yet, but that does sound like what Rand is doing right now. All right, well, again, we'll have to get Ron Paul's take on all this, and he better get on it quick. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Robert 
in California. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hello, uh, Alex. How are you doing? Good. Um, you know, I've worked on the campaign since 2007 as a uh, Los Angeles coordinator and uh, recently as his uh, state coordinator. And I can tell you there are, uh, I'm not going to disclose any sort of campaign things, but I can tell you about campaigns in general of how to win and how to lose. Um, one of the things, is, especially in California, you have to have a start of an early presence. And back in when he announced his presidency, we started organizing on the grassroots level and tried to get some help from the campaign just to get a letter to get the voter registration so we can start calling and making those necessary things to do when we can talk to voters and get votes. Um, we worked very hard here in California getting those delegates that are now seem to be freed up to vote for whoever they want in the convention, but I believe that the people will live by their principles and vote for Ron Paul anyway. Um, yeah, there's. A, we were sort of disappointed on the announcement that he wasn't spending money out here instead of just remaining silent um, a week before our primary. So there are a few things that you know you shouldn't be doing if you want to win elections. Let me ask you this question. What do you make of Ron Paul saying, when you go to Tampa, be respectful? Um, well, we're working on our own um, fight out here in California to take back the, the Republican Party. But uh, we are respectful, but we're not wimps. In other words, we stand up to him. We tell him the truth. Um, but we're respectful about it. You know, I guess maybe he's maybe in his word term respectful doesn't mean, um, you know, yelling and screaming and when the Republicans uh, openly that. take the delegates away and change the rules and have police beat people over the head, how about Ron Paul tell the police not to do that to his supporters? I think he should have done that and uh, denounced their behavior. Um, one of the things is that I learned in politics, because I ran for my own office and been helping other people run for their campaigns, it's four words. Government works by committee. And if we have a majority on that committee who are liberty and freedom people, no matter what the political office is, that's the way the committee will run. And what's happened is, is a lot of people have uh, quit participating in their local governments. And that's what we see is that the evil will actually take that place of where good people are not. You're right. I appreciate your call. Look, here's what needs to be done. The Campaign for Liberty, its most important function is getting people to run locally for office. But they've got to be staunch constitutionalists. And... I began quietly researching about a month ago, Ted Cruz, just right here in Texas, and others being endorsed by Campaign for Liberty. And a lot of these people they are endorsing are not good. So I'm saying, I'm across the board, I've kept my mouth shut. I'm seeing a lot. And again, the guy he's running against is horrible as well, even worse. But I mean, still, it's this idea of we're getting taken over, not them. I mean, Dewhurst is even worse. He's absolutely horrible. I get the mindset. I'm just saying this isn't how Ron Paul always operated. And the firestorm over this, our listeners are not very happy about this. And, and you can see the news. The, 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 the news is picking up the fact they're not. We're not bad. I would warn the Paul operation. If you come out and attack your supporters, it's over. You will be deserted, 95%, just like that. You're on the plank right now, and if you jump off into the sharks, that's your problem. Uh, I mean, it's very, very simple. I, I care about the Pauls. I know they're good men. Uh, they're at a very high level now with a lot of stuff going on around them. I can understand the mindset of, hey, let's take over the Republican Party, but the way this is being executed, that's not how this is going to happen. And I think it's a sneak attack. I think the media is now going to exacerbate all this, tear everything apart. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it, I believe it's a disaster in the making. And I've kept my mouth shut. Um, that's all I can say right now. Zoe in Illinois. Uh, Zoe, you're on the air. Hi, Alex. I'm just a little old blind gal that doesn't know a whole lot, but I've been watching this for a while. And I'm worried, and I'm, I'm reserving judgment, but I've been worried about something for a while, that all of this may have been planned from the very beginning, even by the Pauls, and it may be that old Hegelian dialectic. And I don't want to think that. I, I'm trying not to. But, you know, I, I was a Bush supporter at one time, and I always hang on and, and give people the benefit of the doubt, 
and I'm a Christian woman, and and I believe in being civil to everybody as much as I can. You know, I, I don't I don't care who they are, but I still have my feelings. <laughs> but um, that's what I'm worried that maybe this was all just planned to get the get these libertarian people corralled, and, or and then uh, the people that don't like that, like us, will revolt and then they'll clamp down on us. I don't think that's what's happening because you do judge a tree by its fruits. Real corrupt people can't continue to put out stuff that's coffin nails to the New World Order decade after decade and talk about CIA drug dealing. A sellout looks like Mitt Romney or Barack Obama. That, that, that's not what's happening here. This is, they're there with all this political capital. They know it's perishable like a peach. We pick some peaches. Uh, and some peace trees we've got, and they, and they weren't totally ripe. And just six days later, they were already melting, you know, already oozing, uh, you know, in the bag uh, that we put them in, the shopping bag we put them in, so we had to eat them hurriedly. And, 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 and so politically, they see all this capital, and they think they're going to make some deals, but we're not hearing about these deals. We're told, oh, we're not talking to Romney. Then we learn there's meetings with Romney, closed door. We're being admonished to be respectful. Uh, I mean, I knew Paul couldn't go and get delegates and then try to contest things that the media would spin that. And I kept saying, I don't get this delegate thing, but okay, if he wants to go cause a big furor there, that's wonderful. Now it's not a furor, it's sit down and be respectful. That was the, the tipping point with all the other data I've got. I've really reserved judgment on this, but God bless you, I appreciate your call. Uh, James, calling from Connecticut. You're on the air, James. Hey, how you doing, Alex? Good. Hey, um, I... Uh, I I wrote Rand Paul actually this morning. Um, I gave him a little quote from uh, it's actually a, a rapper named Immortal Technique. He, uh, he says, uh, the problem with always being a conformist is that when you try to change the system from within, it's not you who changes the system. It's the system that eventually changes you. There is usually nothing wrong with compromising in the situation, but compromising yourself in the situation is another story completely. Um, you know, I, I completely believe that. I, I don't know what exactly he's doing. I hope he... He knows what he's doing, and he can, um, you know, I, I don't really buy this whole idea that he's going to be able to change anything from the inside because, you know, how I, how I just said, you know, I mean, it's not going to be him that changes the system. The system's going to eventually change him. Well, I mean, Campaign for Liberty is now going for more and more mainline Republican types. So really, it looks like meet the new boss, same as the old boss. I mean, if we're going to replace one line of old Republicans with people like, slimy Ted Cruz, then how about we get the most slimy in there and get this over with? All this creeping around business is what's destroying us. I say keep Obama in there. This country will really be in a revolution. I mean, I want my republic back, and I'm tired of a bunch of mainline Republicans, you know, going around telling me they're going to fix everything. You guys have done nothing but sell this country out. Anything else, caller? Yeah, the only thing I say, I completely agree with you. I, I think that, honestly, we need to end up at the bottom, and that's the only way that anyone else is going to really wake up to this until it's staring them in the face, you know, it's hurting them in their stomach. That's, that's the only way that, you know, change is going to actually happen. So I, I'm, I'm right with you. I say, you know, let's you know, bring it to my front doorstep. Let's do this. You know, it's time to bring it all out in the open. They can, you know, stop their secretive stuff. That's why Ron Paul and my listeners, and make no mistake, you're the turbo booster that got it into orbit. We got here because we're in their face with the truth, not compromising. That's what wins wars, is total commitment. We're in a war. Let's recognize it. Let's not play patty cake. I'm just telling the polls, your supporters aren't going to buy this. We'll be right back. I don't want everybody just to run off foaming at the mouth. Um, I mean, what do we expect? I mean, keep, stay in, get delegates. Got to still be the president that way with a minority of delegates. He was guaranteed to hand them over to Romney. What did they think? Well, keep the campaign going. Keep educating people. But then at the key moment, don't fight for Texas. Don't fight for California. You just heard one of the campaign people from California earlier. I don't see Ron Paul and Rand Paul changing the Republicans. I see the Republicans changing them. And that's the issue. If I saw Romney out saying, we're going to disband the TSA, or we're going to stop the groping, I'll even take crumbs at this point. Or, you know, we're going to get out of the UN, or we're going to something, nothing, nothing but warmongering and, and NDAA from Mitt Romney. 
and where does the, the polls think they're going to be in six months? Everybody's going to remember. We're not like mainline political idiots, Republicans and mainline, you know, you know, Democrats and people. We're going to remember all of this. I mean, this is a, if you think there's an explosion today over this, imagine it down the road. This is a slow burn. As big as the explosions and fires are right now, it's only going to get bigger unless Ron Paul comes out and says specifically, and not in some little back channel email. You know, on TV, they make these big announcements, and everybody, you behave yourselves. Mitt Romney's our Lord and Savior. But then emails, oh, Ron Paul still got some plans. Come there. I mean, it, look, the Republicans are freaked out. They know Ron Paul was the real front runner. And there's a bunch of political dynasty stuff going on. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. And I'll say it right now. It's not like this is, you know, Queen Elizabeth and I'm a British subject and I'm supposed to, whatever you say, I'll be respectful. No, I won't be respectful in the face of tyranny because extremism and defense of liberty is no vice. Who said that? Barry Goldwater. I mean, look what we've turned into in this country by always compromising, 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 compromising. Dan in Virginia, you're on the air. Go ahead. Alex. Yes, sir. This, this is your red force cockroach videographer. And the high from this last weekend. Oh, you're the great guy. Shot seven hours of tape for us and gave it to us. By the way, we're using some of that in a piece for the nightly news right now. Brother, private investigator, tell us uh, tell us what you think of the Ron Paul thing. Uh, I'm so confused. I don't know which end is up right now. Uh, I feel like I'm going to be going to Tampa. Are you going to Are you going to do what you're told and kneel to Romney? Negative. No compromise. Well, you're not a good person now, then. Well, I'm just going to have to be evil, mean, and nasty. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't. I can't figure. Wh what are they thinking? Uh, I was in South Carolina for the primary. Newt Gingrich had to cancel an event the day before the polling was done because nobody showed up, and you know it wasn't some court sort of off-the-wall group that he was speaking. No, 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 no. I mean, that's right. There's no Mitt Romney stickers, nothing but Ron Paul stickers, and now we're hearing we need to be respectful of Mitt Romney and the Republican machine that cheated Ron Paul. I mean, I, I mean I'm trying to be nice here and feel like I'm selling out by not full-bore attacking. But I'm going to hold back. I'm going to I'm going to sit back on my judgment. But only for a few days. I've got, I better hear something from Ron Paul right now on this. I, I'm I'm with you on that. Uh, you know, I, I knew the fix was in when in South Carolina the polls closed at seven. They declared a winner at seven seven o'clock and twenty eight seconds. Of course, the fix was in, my friend. Great to hear from you. A few more calls coming up, and I'm going to have Lord Monks on about 30, 40 minutes, and I'll continue with calls. I haven't even gotten all the news. But, I mean, this is important, though, because we put Ron Paul where he is. Make no mistake, you, my listeners, did. He's admitted that. Remember, Rand Paul opposed the NDAA. Rand Paul opposed these new wars. Rand Paul is a good guy, but they've made a terrible miscalculation. I mean, it's one thing to say we're going to go and make a fracas and try to get Mitt Romney to commit to some things and have Mitt Romney say, you know, hey, I want you Ron Paul people and I'm going to, you know, make these commitments. That would be at least something. But just, you know, Rand Paul, hey, uh, I'm uh, endorsing Mitt Romney. While the Ron Paul people via the campaign have all been told, keep going. You know, we're going to secretly have a victory. And I knew it wasn't real the last few months. And I'm kind of like, hey, don't don't call up telling me delegate this, delegate that. I was like, I really, I think I've said on air before, that, you know, it's going to look like they're trying to steal the election. And that I don't think Ron Paul's going to do that. Of course, I've been proven right again. He has conceded that they didn't win the delegates and that they're not going to contest it. And that you need to go and behave yourself. we got Lord Monkton coming on for a couple segments for the big update. Then I'll continue with your calls on this subject, a bunch of others. Uh, let's go to James in Omaha, Nebraska. Thanks for holding her on the air. Hi, Alex. First time caller. Um, I'm actually a delegate here in Nebraska. I won my uh, Sarpy County convention uh, going on to the state. It's, it's, I'm really disheartened. I mean, it's, you know, I'm putting off family vacations. In my book, it goes God, family, country. And in this case, I was going to put country before family. And I almost feel like I'm, I'm getting shafted. 
Uh, just one point also. We should well, you know, your gut, your gut, if you're tuned in to the Almighty, is always right. And I got to be honest, my gut says betrayal. Sometimes the poll people may not know this. They may have miscoordinated. That's why we got to hold back. But let me tell you, my political guns just swung around in their direction, and I got my radar on going, analyze, analyze. And now I'm, I'm like, you already knew this, Alex. You already saw the signs. And I'm like slapping myself in the face. It's just unbelievable. I'm sorry. Go ahead. This is, if this is betrayal or miscalculated betrayal, unintentional betrayal, it's the type that hurts the worst. You know, I tell people in business, I'm in business with, you know, in life to, you know, get the capital to run this operation. It's one thing if I don't know somebody and they, and they try to cheat me, but if I've worked with somebody for a long time and they do something wrong to me, I am their enemy forever. You make something personal with me, it's personal. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I agree. I, I also, I think that uh, it's going to take a little bit of working on your side, but we should call uh, <sighs> Mittens by his God-given name, Willard, you know, for, from here on out. People need People need to call him by his name. He's got this Hollywood rock star named Mitt because that's the only way that he could get elected because who's going to vote for a Willard? But, uh, we and then they'll say, oh, doctor. you must be for Obama. Hey, I'm done voting for the lesser two evils, okay? I mean, what do they think we're going to do? This is ridiculous. His God-given name, too. But Willard and Mary, you know, she can't even go by her own name that the good Lord gave well, you. Well, it's like Obama. He's got so that. many names, we don't even know what his name is. I appreciate your call. Chris in Florida, you take us out. Go ahead. Well, Alex, uh, I, I've been impressed by Dr. Paul since about 1992 when I was becoming politically active and trying to decide for whom to vote when I was coming of age to vote. But uh, he's done a great job at identifying the problem. I just don't agree with the solution of a state-mandated, commodity-based currency credit system. And uh, Now, that can be manipulated as too, but at least we're having a debate about it. That's why I look at all the options. But what do you think of what's happened currently? Uh, it, it's not as shocking and surprising considering that in that uh, he abstained from the NDAA voter in the first vote for H.R. 347, Senate Bill 1794, and that he voted for uh, the Afghanistan police action. I, you know, I, I've been impressed by a lot of the uh, things he's been, he's been saying, but uh, the problem, of course, is that the, the issue of currency and credit does not... Sure, sure, and that's another debate. I hear you. I appreciate your call. Believe in God, not man. That's all I can tell you. But I've been threatened. My family's been threatened. I didn't compromise. I've been offered big jobs. I was offered Glenn Beck's job before he existed. It was described to me. The books, the national TV show. Don't I want it? Um, I, I just sell out to, it's like, sell out to bathe in a latrine. I mean, no thank you. I just don't get selling out. I, I, it's not in me. All right, folks, uh, coming up in about 40 minutes, Adam Kokesh is going to pop in to give us his take on Rand Paul endorsing Mitt Romney and Ron Paul saying he's not going to use the delegates now to try to unseat or even cause a fracas or challenge it uh, at the RNC. That means a deal's been made for VP for Rand or a cabinet position for Ron. We, the listeners, the supporters, need to then be told that and need to have the plan explained to us, not done behind closed doors, to then make our decision. I reserve judgment for now, but I've told you my issues, pro and con. They've got great voting records, they're constitutionalist against carbon taxes, New World Order, all of it. So for now, I'm reserving judgment, but our listeners are not, and it's all over the web, 95% in votes are down on this. And the Republican Party's trying to spin it. now. Obama's horrible. He's terrible. And, and, and I would like to think that Mitt Romney is going to be a good guy. But I know he has the same financial backers. He supported carbon taxes in the past. And I've had uh, from a climate depot, Mark Moreno, who's worked in the Senate on saying he doesn't like Mitt Romney. And we got Lord Moncton on only for two or three segments. He's on about a host of breaking environmental news, also birth certificate news. He makes the joke that he found his birth certificate in Hawaii. That's <laughs> really funny. I've got a oh, I've got a Lord Moncton 2012 for president pin because he's you know he says so. Of course, he doesn't have fake names. He didn't give up his citizenship in Indonesia, so I guess he's more a U.S. citizen than Obama actually is. But but let me ask you this because you've been the head of the U.K. Independence Party, bringing it from nowhere to second, you know, well, the fastest growing now, one of the biggest parties now. Uh, you've seen the inside of all this. I understand, hey, if, we, if, if the Republicans got uh, that supported Ron Paul got cheated, that was clear fraud, 
then why not have some influence by endorsing Romney? But what are we getting? I, I, I mean, I, I don't know if you've been following this, Lord Moncton, but it's the big hot issue. Before we digress into the other big issues, you're here with us with an update for today. What's your gut take on this, looking in from the outside, but also the inside, spending a lot of time each year here in the U.S. and sharing a lot of Ron Paul's views? I think what's happened here is that it's become clear that Romney now has enough delegates to take the convention, virtually whatever anybody else does. And there comes a point where it isn't all that sensible to try fighting on. And I think Ron Paul has done very well hanging in there for as long as he has with the sensible views that he has. And I hope that the part of the deal that may have been done here is that he will be given some sort of cabinet post so that he can exercise some sensible influence over Mitt Romney or, or Willard or whatever his name is because the, the difficulty that I see is that Romney hasn't really been very steady on matters of policy. At one moment he, he's all in favor of doing nothing about climate change, the next moment he's demanding that we must have cap and trade, uh, the same on abortion, the same on many other issues, some of them very serious issues on which by now a politician hoping to hold the highest office in the land ought to have settled views. So I am concerned that he is uh, an all things to all men candidate. And I do think that what we need, and I'm sure you agree with this, is somebody like Ron Paul who has clear views and, uh, to my mind, very sensible views on what now needs to be done. It's very clear that the number one issue is to reduce and reduce substantially the annual deficit of the US government because you're now borrowing very large amounts of money from China and anyone who borrows money from another government is no longer a free and sovereign nation. You become in hock to your debtor and your debtor then starts calling the tune. I haven't heard enough from any of the candidates except Ron Paul about this very serious issue. Romney has been more or less entirely silent on it. And I don't think that's acceptable either. I think All right, so, so, so there's the perspective, and I see what you're saying. If he's not going to win, why not try to influence? And I guess if Ron Paul did get a cabinet position, and actually, I, I just don't see them doing that. If he gets strung along and doesn't get it, we know they got manipulated. Uh, and I just think, my gut is, Lord Moncton, the, the supporters... I aren't going to buy that. They're not, it's not that they don't understand it. I just think if Romney hadn't supported abortion and carbon taxes and written Obamacare, then it would be a little different if he was a little more mainline conservative. He's so liberal, so globalist in the past, but then I see your argument. We'll get Ron Paul in there as a counterbalance. I mean, I understand those perspectives. It's just that Ron Paul's never compromised on anything, and I would see it as a compromise here. Uh, you know what? We've got to reserve judgment this far. My only issue is that the campaign played along, even though I looked at it politically and said they can't use delegates and then try to unseat him. That would be seen as stealing an election. But they used that, I guess, to keep the momentum going, uh, and, and that it would then be a betrayal. That's my issue, Christopher Moncton, Lord Moncton. I, I can see that uh, very much. And I think we now have to hope and pray that Mitt Romney, who does look like ending up as the official Republican candidate, is going to toughen up his, his act and raise his game. I think he does have one advantage, which is these days, frighteningly rare in politics, he has set up and grown and run what is now a very successful international business. And at least, therefore, he knows how many beans make five, <laughs> which is more than can be said of the amateur. I think that's the epithet everybody's now using of President Obama after a book by uh, a, a New York Times journalist, of all people, called The Amateur, describing the really catastrophic, catastrophic performance of Obama in office. How Obama thinks there's 47 states. Uh, absolutely. Let's shift gears out of that. I mean, not 47, 57 states. I'm now channeling Obama, not 50. Uh, Lord Moncton, uh, shifting gears, what's the latest you've got breaking from Hawaii? Well, it's very clear now that somebody in the Hawaiian Health Department knew that the document that now appears on the White House website is a forgery. It's clear it is a forgery, that much uh, we've discussed before, but it's now clear, and I did an analysis on this for my fellow hereditary peers, those are the people who don't have a seat or vote but still take an interest in politics, uh, but have a historic connection with the House of Lords, and 
we, you know, I, I do papers for them from, from time to time and they do them for me. And what I've discovered is that when you analyze exactly what happened, how this document came to be requested, how it found its way to the White House, it's very clear that even if the White House didn't know this document was a forgery, and there's a certain amount of evidence that actually it didn't, there's a lot of evidence that, in fact, it's really compelling and overwhelming evidence that somebody, and I don't know who, in the Hawaiian Health Department knows that document to be a forgery. And everybody from the governor downwards is very, very carefully looking the other way. But I don't think that's now going to be a sustainable position. I've had advice from a, a constitutional expert about this. He said, first of all, those who try to say this is an inconsequential matter, an issue that doesn't really matter, it's a historical clause in the Constitution that no longer has any relevance, these, he says, flatly are incorrect. You amend the Constitution or you abide by it. And what should now happen is there must be an opening up of the official record of Mr. Obama's birth to independent forensic scrutiny here in Hawaii. Unless and until that is done, there is now, in my view, sufficient doubt about where he was born to justify even his supporters from withholding sure. their vote from him at the next election on the ground that they can't be sure that he is the president and that he himself by endorsing the posting up on the White House website of a document which is a manifest and maladroit forgery, and then by doing absolutely nothing about it when an eminent sheriff has found, uh, after six months' examination, that it is a forgery, they, they can now, and I think must now, legitimately, withhold their vote from this man unless and until he clears the matter up by taking the blindingly obvious step he has not taken so far, which is to say to the department in Hawaii, come on, let's open up the forensic record, uh, to the original record to forensic inspect inspection by both sides so that there can be no more nonsense about this. The fact that neither he nor Hawaii have done this and that he, in fact, as his very first executive order when he took office on the first full day of his holding office was an order sealing all his personal past records. A most extraordinary first executive order by a president. Narcissistic in the extreme, you may think. But why did he do this? He did this presumably, inferentially, because he has something to hide. Because it was the sword of Damocles hanging over his head and expanding. The mainstream media acts like we've been given proof after proof. First, they said we'd always been given the original and it was clearly a receipt that wasn't even a copy of the original. They said nothing else existed. Then they gave us the ridiculous fake. Then Abercrombie, right before that, the governor of Hawaii, where you are, said to the reporter, well, I've looked, it's not there, Obama has a problem. That's a quote. A few months later, it pops up. They never let forensic inspection happen. The AP and others had a different weird copy, all different colors, different fonts. I mean, this is crazy. And the fact that they've sealed all their records, they said it was a conspiracy theory that he'd never been named Barry Sotero. That was later confirmed. Uh, the records cut out in Kenya, they say looks like theft. There wouldn't be records if it hadn't been there. Uh, this is pretty scary, the, the blackmail potential of this Lord Moncton. Well, this is another big problem. There are people who know exactly what the true position is. At least two, as far as I can track down, here in Hawaii know exactly what that position is. And you know, it would not surprise me, given the visit here last week by Sheriff Arpaio's uh, cold case posse, it would not surprise me at all that they are on the trail of these people and will eventually be working with the Hawaii Police Department to feel some collars, as we say, in, in Britain. I don't think this is going to go away now, and I think it's not going to go away for one rather startling reason, which was given to me by the, the very eminent constitutional expert whom I consulted. He said, I'll tell you what, Lord Moncton, stay there, we've got to go to break. Tell us about this big bombshell on the other side. And then we'll continue with phone calls. Adam Kakesh popping in. Lord Moncton is our guest. We'll give you his website when we come back. We've got all this breaking Ron Paul news. And I've got some other important news I need to hit before this hour's up. So what was the big intel you got from a constitutional scholar, Lord Moncton? 
Uh, it's very interesting. This is, this is an experienced lawyer, long in practice in constitutional law. He's appeared before the Supreme Court. He knows his way around. And he said that any defendant who was accused of a criminal offence created by a law signed by President Obama into law is entitled to raise in his defence the question whether or not the president is the president, the law the law, and therefore the offence he's charged with, an offence at all. And he can insist on his right to go in the person of forensic um, experts acting for his attorneys to have a look at the original record in Hawaii to satisfy himself that that record is indeed a genuine record of your president's birth. And this is virtually bound to happen. According to this lawyer, he said it's only a matter of time before attorneys for one defendant or another accused of some crime signed into law by the president. That information could be subpoenaed of this defense. Absolutely, they, they, they have the absolute right. The president is Brady versus Maryland, 49 years ago, in which it was said that the prosecution has to facilitate uh, the defense by making sure that any information or documentation in their hands or under their control or accessible to them, which in any way might tend to exonerate or exculpate the accused, must be made available to the defense. It's an absolute overriding right of the defense and this is going to happen it's only a matter of time he says it may happen between now and the election it may happen after the election but at some point it is going mm -hmm. to happen and then the whole shabby house of cards is going to come down and in the meantime alex if anyone wants to find out more about this and realize that you and i are not just pointy-headed birthers but there is really good reason to doubt this then i have sent uh, to your website infowars.com a copy of the briefing paper that I wrote for my fellow hereditary peers. So it is available for anyone to just download. Oh, good. Let me, let me stop you, Lord Moncton. I'll find out what address you sent that to to make sure we post it at infowars.com. But we can also find it at scienceandpublicpolicy.org. Is it up there? You won't find it there because it's not really within their subject matter, but it is within yours. So I've sent it to your, your folk. Chris and Jaron have both got it. And so you'll be able to put it up on your website. Yes, sir. We will post it right now. It's a 20-page document. We did get it. I don't believe it's posted yet. It'll be posted by Adon. Uh, Kurt's on vacation right now, right now at Infowars.com. It'll be up there in the next five minutes. Excellent. So anyone who wants to study this for themselves and see why it is that I think that Sheriff Arpaio is probably right, and I have independently talked to forensic experts on everything from the typewriting to the electronic layers of which the document is composed, you'll find a summary of the points that impressed me as suggesting that there is something very desperately wrong with the document now appearing on the White House website. And let's be clear about this. It is not we, Alex who are raising uh, the, the, the issue here. It is President Obama who's raised this issue here, raised these doubts, created these legitimate doubts about where he was born by putting up on the White House website a manifestly, obviously bogus document. You'll see that from my peers' briefing paper when you get it. It's an obviously bogus document. There is no argument about it. It is definitely bogus. And the, the question is this. He knows now that a serious sheriff is saying it's bogus. He knows now that this is spreading. It can't be put back in its box. Court cases happening all over America. Well, it's just Cotton. like the global warming crowd being caught in fraud after fraud. Their house of cards is imploding. These are forgerous fraudsters. And it's the same people. This is the thing. What has happened is that the left has now become so fixated on whatever the party line happens to be that they are now incapable of recognizing that there even is such a thing as right and wrong or true and false. The only thing they recognize is what is expedient that backs the party line and what is inexpedient because it doesn't. And that's the only measure that they now use. There is no morality left in the left. They've abandoned all reason. They've abandoned all understanding that some things are true and some things are not true. Some things are right and some things are not right. And until they get back to that, they are going to continue the long, inexorable decline that began under Ron Reagan and Margaret Thatcher with the collapse of Soviet communism. And soon we will have the collapse of communism here once your president 
is removed humiliatingly from office for not having been straight about where he was born. Well, let's hope that's the case. Lord Christopher Monckton, thank you for the update. I want to get you back up soon. You're going down to the big globalist confab in Rio. Thank you so much. When is Rio, uh, Lord Monckton? Rio is in, is in about 10 days' time. It's in mid-June. You're going to be uh, on then, sir. We're booking you right now. Scienceofpublicpolicy.org. Read his paper at Infowars.com. We're on the Let me hit some news here real quick before we go to more of your calls and Adam Kokesh coming up on the Ron Paul front. See, I get Lord Moncton's perspective of, okay, it's a dead end for Ron Paul. Try to influence Romney. But you would want to communicate that as the new strategy to your supporters first, and that's not what happened. Ron Paul puts out one message that, oh, we're going to win, we're going to get the delegates, we're going to overthrow it. And then meanwhile, you know, a month ago, hey, we're suspending campaigning. But that's not what we really mean. And then Rand Paul's on the show and acts like it's all over. And people are like, Jones, don't say that's what they're saying. Again, it's, it's, it's delusional. And I'm just telling you how the listeners, how the supporters of Ron Paul and Rand Paul are going to take this, and it's incredibly negative. But again, they've done a great job with their votes, with what they've done. They're, they're great men. I'm not saying they're bad guys, but if they're trying to merge the Republican Party, we need to let them know we don't like what's happening. Before I go back to your calls and then Adam Kokesh, I want to shift gears here. This story is up on the Drudge Report, drudgereport.com. It originates from infowars.com. Green Police, Miami Beach to make recycling compulsory, $2,500 fine. Now, they've already started this in Australia, England, and areas, and in New York. What is it? You know, $1,000 fine for cat litter in the ladies' trash. And they come and search your trash, and they get block captains who get part of the tickets. They're like meter maids. $2,000 a day fines for dust in your barn. I mean, this is meant to shut us down. The big factories, they're exempt. Animal ID, premises ID, all of this. Audi's infamous Green Police Super Bowl commercial may not be far off. Well, the, the makers were in the San Francisco Chronicle saying, we're here to acclimate you. This is the plan. Miami Beach has passed an ordinance that makes recycling compulsory with those who fail to comply under threat of fines of $2,500, Miami Herald reports. Now, it's just like all the other garbage we see. This is tyranny. This is not, you know, Madoff can steal money, only after incredible pressure does he get in trouble. Corazine can steal money, doesn't get in trouble. All of this, I mean, that's the real crime going on. And, and no amount of tax raising, no amount of this is going to keep the government going. It's designed to collapse. Now, I want to go shift gears into some other areas. I saw a story out of WHTC Radio saying, what if, truly a moot point. And they go on to say, so what if they're putting in all over the country pre-crime cameras that track what you're doing? If you don't just walk straight on the subway or on the sidewalk, if you stop and read something, the police come that suspicious. And they say, so what? You know, it's a, it's a moot point. And of course, then the Daily Mail picked up on our article afterwards, new surveillance cameras will use computer eyes to find pre-crimes by detecting suspicious behavior and calling for guards. Again, we wrote an article about this in the Daily Mail picked it up, that we can show folks our article about San Francisco getting pre-crime cameras. That's actually uh, the article. In fact, here it is right here. Uh, San Francisco to get pre-crime surveillance cameras. This came out yesterday. It was also on the Drudge Report, drudgereport.com. System alerts authorities to suspicious behavior before crime is committed. Paul Joseph Watson, Infowars.com. And I saw all these sites say, so what? It keeps us safe. Uh, like this article from earlier this year. Actually, of May of last year, look at this document cam, guys. High-tech cameras to record kids' food choices in school, cafeterias, ABC News, Department of Defense grants, San Antonio, Texas. Everything they eat is tracked, and the kids are going to get in trouble if they don't finish their apple. Laptops that the school issues free that you pay for with taxes, they're not free. You're paying for that. Where should I put this to get a document cam shot? Where would you... Or should I put it here, there? I'll, I'll put it wherever you want. Okay. So there's the article right there. People watching on PrisonPlanet.tv. Yes, this is real. The system has always admitted that this is the plan. This has always been the plan. Is a total control grid 
to restrict your guns, to restrict your movement. If you're not a good globalist, they're going to turn your passport off. They're not going to let you buy and sell. They've now said this. 30,000 armed drones, checkpoints, TSA, everything. Hiring pedophiles at every department to run it. All real. This is what tyranny looks like. And so I see people making jokes going, so what? Let the cops have pre-crime stuff. It's like license plate reading cameras. In the future, they can... I saw the police five years ago in Austin, went to the Texas legislature, try to get a law passed that people that had criticized police, that that would be in a database when they pull you over or when a license plate reader hits you. So now you wear like a yellow star that you're a patriot. We already had the police under orders pulling over people with Ron Paul stickers when we protested Bilderberg. Do you know what this is going to be used for in the hands of the tyrants? <clears throat> I... I Look, we're being totally enslaved. This stuff is coming down on us. So you want smart cameras watching everybody? It's used to watch kids at school. Okay, this is what's going on. This is outrageous what's happening. So I guess the kids deserve to have smart cameras watching them. Now even in the bathrooms. They now record naked children in the showers and say it's freedom. There's nothing these crooks won't do. You know, I remember three years ago, I'd talk about laptops in California and in Pennsylvania where they admitted they were watching the kids at home with them, and people didn't believe me. They didn't believe me seven years ago when Google put out a press release to stockholders saying we watch people over their cameras at home without them knowing. Now the CIA director admits it, and people are like, you're a kook for not wanting the government to watch you without warrants. I'm like, what? I'm a kook because I don't want it? See, it goes from it isn't happening to, oh, the death panels aren't happening to, hey, you don't want death panels. You don't want people to have a right to have the government kill them. This isn't your right to die. It's the right for the government to kill you because they don't. Because you're now under socialist health care. They want the money and then the control. They don't want you to get the health care. It's how it works. Do we have Adam Kakesh lined up, guys? Yeah, we're just getting connected. Fantastic. We're getting him connected right now on Skype to get his take on all this. But, you know, it's just a lot of things like the Ron Paul people starting to endorse kind of neocons like Ted Cruz. And I get the fact that he's running against somebody even worse, but I just I don't get that. I mean, it's just they're becoming mainline. They're being co-opted, not the other way around. Ron Paul saying, go, you know, we're not going to win the delegates now, but go and, and sit there as my little pretty block, uh, you know, for my son to get some position. And by the way, be respectful of a Republican criminal system that robs and steals and sells torture and secret arrest and stole the election from Ron Paul. I mean, don't you know that's going to be political suicide for you guys? And, and, and then the system wins instead of keeping the liberty movement going. Don't you understand that? I got a bunch of callers. We're going to try to get to you. But I wanted to get Adam Kakesh, who's, you know, had his own TV show, syndicated radio. Been a huge Ron Paul supporter, uh, a Marine Corps you know, veteran of Fallujah and other events over in Afghanistan, spoke out against it once he got home. He's been a huge Ron Paul supporter. He started freaking out a few weeks ago, and I, everybody said, are you going to talk about this? And I said, I'm going to reserve judgment because I'm not sure yet, and I'm still not. But now I've gone from 17 years of supporting Ron Paul and appreciating the work and his voting record and saying he's something special and so is Rand is saying maybe they're more like mainline, you know, far right politicians, kind of like a Senator uh, DeMint. Do I hate him like Dianne Feinstein? Do I hate him like, you know, Chucky e. Schumer? No. Or, you know, somebody like, um, you know, somebody like Harry Reid? No. They, they, you know, they're overall better than the others. But, wow, then I get told if I go there, I need to be respectful in Tampa. You know, that's rubbing it in right there. That's rubbing it in right there. And so maybe we should get people like Cruz on. He's running for Senate and, and you know, really, really grilling. Maybe he's rolled over and, and, and shown a new leaf to liberty. Uh, but Adam Kokesh, host of Adam versus the man you were at Bilderberg with us. That was awesome. Uh, what is your overall take on this? Why have you gotten soured more and more to towards the uh, Paul system? I mean, is it that it looks like we're just taken for granted and that now they've got the, you know, the, the, the sexier, cooler mainline uh, rhinos, uh, you, you know, with their pacemakers? I mean, what's going on here? Well, thanks, Alex, for the, the, the introduction. But I, I, I do kind of take issue with that characterization of, of souring on the Ron Paul movement, because it is a distinct sort of 
sub-movement of the broader love illusion. Well, let me stop you. I'm not saying you're souring. I mean, liberty goes on, The great, but, but the people made Ron Paul and Rand Paul, and I'm, not, I'm saying souring to what the upper echelon is doing. Well, that's not what people are, are souring to. People are, are really confused and, and frustrated now with what they're seeing out of Ron Paul, Inc., out of the Ron Paul campaign, starting with the statement uh, about three weeks ago from Jesse Benton, effectively conceding the race before it was, I don't know if you can say officially conceded now. And then saying they didn't concede it. Exactly. Political doublespeak. Right, and there was a lot of mixed messaging coming out of the Ron Paul campaign, and I, I, I want to not be a sycophant to Ron Paul and not be someone who, who doesn't question him, but I, I don't think that the failings of the Ron Paul campaign are a result of Ron himself necessarily selling out, possibly being taken advantage of, as you've been following, I'm sure, the, the travails of Jesse Benton and how many people that he managed to piss off in the grassroots. But there is a, a theory now, and, that, and, and I'm going to be testing this. I have some interviews coming up for my show about where Jesse Benton came from. And from what I know from reliable sources, he was actually uh, sleeping and living with another woman when he first got picked up by the Ron Paul campaign in 2007 and then ended up marrying Jesse or Ron Paul's granddaughter Valerie Pyatt and has worked his way into the organization since then clearly at very least getting overpaid and over trusted with authority that he doesn't deserve well in over his head pretty incompetent as a campaign manager but well I have to say I've had high level people in the campaign off record tell me that and I mean, the the most senior people just say they do not know what they're doing. And I and I th and I think we should give them the benefit of the doubt and say for now that's what's happening. I mean, to be clear here, you're saying you take issue with the souring point. I'm at souring with yes, what the echelon, what the leadership of Campaign for Liberty, Ron Paul uh, Inc. was doing. We here, as original supporters, myself, 17 years, we have a right to say. Hey, uh, you know, suddenly don't have the delegates contest. Suddenly, Mitt Romney's great. I mean, it's. I mean, Mitt Romney has got a pretty bad record. And Paul, but to to stick with what's happening with Ron, because Ron is the center of this. He is the center of the movement. He is the one who commands the uh, the organization of Ron Paul Inc. Campaign for Liberty, his presidential campaign, the Liberty PAC, various other organizations that are all a part of this that have gotten Jesse Benton over half a million dollars in the last year in salary and various kickbacks. But Trig V. Olson was involved with all of the color revolutions, has, has been a longtime interventionist, and was the adult in the room that Mitch McConnell sent to help run the Kentucky race for Rand Paul that Jesse Benton managed and take after the Republicans him. tried to shoot Rand down right and Trigby Olson is now a consultant for the presidential campaign whose consulting firm has gotten over two hundred thousand dollars from them but what Rand Paul represents is not what Ron Paul represents and I, and I think uh, most of us have always known this and he's been kind of open about it and and people have had the same delusional thinking that they have about Ron Paul applied to him and, and I don't mean to say that it's delusional to admire Ron Paul for all that he's accomplished, for the millions of hearts and minds he is free, for the incredible work. No, no, that I agree, but let's shift gears on limited time. For those that don't know, Ron Paul's come out and said, okay, it looks like we're not going to be able to win with 20% of the delegates. Go there and be respectful. That, be respectful of all the stuff the Republican machine's done. I don't like that. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm allowed as an evil American to have my views here. And Ron Paul said four years ago, we put them on the map early on with half their contributions for my show. And we've been there the entire time. I'm telling you, my listeners, 95%, we've got polls going, are very upset. I'm just saying the campaign needs to be clear about this. And if people have been speaking uh, for them that aren't right, or if things have gotten off track, they need to get back on track right now. That's my question to you, Adam, with your hand on the pulse of the grassroots. Is this as explosively dangerous to the whole Paul Inc., which I want to continue and be constitutional as I see it being dangerous? Well, in a way, Ron Paul Inc. is now at odds with the movement that Ron inspired, and that's the challenge here. And really, this falls at Ron's feet, and you're correct. And I, Alex, I hope to see you in Tampa. Are you going to be there? 
I'm, you know, I wasn't going to go. I was going to let everybody just go. But now that we're being told we behave ourselves, I think I am going to have to come. <laughs> <laughs> just so that you can disbehave. Uh, right. Sure. Well, there's uh, this problem between the grassroots and the campaign now because of lack of direction. And that really does fall at Ron's feet. You know, I'm organizing the Veterans for Ron Paul March on the RNC. Ron Paul is the choice of the troops.com. having gotten more campaign. You countries. better behave yourself. Wait a minute. Don't you embarrass mittens. Well, we're going to go and make a scene and do what Ron Paul said in his latest email, saying that we are going to force the establishment to listen to the liberty message. We are going to force them. We are going to be in their faces with that. So I'm running with that. And, and Ron so Paul. So what's going on here? We've got a mixed message, I guess, to make Romney feel good and cozy up to Rand. And then you've got Paul with his message to the original troops. Well, everybody's looking at Ron Paul, and the million-dollar question is, what is he going to do with all of this momentum? Is he going to demand a speaking spot? And if he does, what's he going to say? Is he going to call yeah, out Yeah, that's not enough. That's not enough. We want to go take it over and have a huge fracas or run third party to inject real issues. Or have the culmination of the Ron Paul revolution be secretary of the transportation department, Rand Paul. And I don't think that's going to cut it either. So there's this idea that the, the Republican Party is the face of the military industrial complex the real purpose of the republican establishment is to subvert the legitimate american will to freedom the desire to create a truly american society and pervert it with interventionism to pervert it with the modern warfare the state. opposite of what george washington stood for empire america versus republic america and that's why Jesse Benton may have been sent by the establishment to get Trig V. Olson into Ron's inner circle and to support Rand Paul and to convince him, to convince Ron to do all of these things that are contrary to his message. So Ron is a human being. Are you he saying this is idiocy or are you saying there is a Benedict Arnold in the woodpile? It's both. It is absolutely both. I can tell you decisively it is both. And, 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 and as Ron Paul supports, we have to acknowledge his shortcomings as well. He is not the greatest organizational leader. He is not the greatest commander of the movement. He is not going to be the one who is going to give direction and organize and take charge. And to be fair, to be absolutely perfectly uh, fair as we, as we should be with Ron, he's demonstrated poor judgment in the past if you look at the racist newsletters. And I'm not saying that Ron is racist. That's absolute crap. But as he admitted himself, it was a failure of oversight. It was a big business. They, they had dozens of people, 10 or 15 different versions, yeah. So I don't know how much it's Ron's actual shortcomings as an organizational leader and you know, or his gullibility and how far that goes to explaining what's going on. But on the other side, you also have the Benedict Arnolds. You have Rand Paul now endorsing Mitt Romney. And there may be some strategy behind that, but clearly he's not serving the message. I mean, we should not be surprised that warmongering Rand Paul, who voted for the act of war against Iran of sanctions, is now supporting the other pro-war candidates. Wow, you're calling him warmongering. I think he went with that as a second path or a third path to not having war. <laughs> well, I, 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 that's like, hey, let's just have a little bit of war. Let's just have a little bit of tyranny and fascism. But there are lots of... Uh, stay there. Final oh, segment. I'll have to go into overdrive to take calls. And if you don't have time, I got the nightly news to do. Man, this is crazy. But we as Ron Paul supporters, we put them on the map. We're allowed to get angry. Hi. This We've had incredible success using Ron Paul as a vehicle to educate people. The fight goes on. Talking to Adam Kokesh. Uh, I've talked to senior people. They've sat out there when they've been guests on the show. Senior in the campaign and said, what's going on here and there? And they're like, oh, man, they don't know what they're doing. They're like 25 years old. The people that are older on the campaign actually aren't running things. Uh, but I never said all that on air. So I want to think it's been, because nobody's perfect when you're in the arena, this fog of political war, all of that. But whoever told Ron Paul to, to come out and say, after we're going to go and fight with the delegates to now, well, it's clear we can't win, so we're just going to go and be respectful and and then uh, Rand, a little too sweetie cake over Mitt Romney. And I understand it's an honor to get considered for vice president. I understand the lofty power and all that. But I've been offered power and didn't sell out. And, I, and look, I was already very successful. Probably more so because I didn't sell out. I did it my way, as Frank Sinatra would say. But uh, because you can't compromise with this. There's no way they're going to influence Romney. It's to be the other way around. And, and, and I knew instinctively this morning when I got up and saw this, it's been out since last night, that people weren't going to go along with this. So I don't know 
In closing, Adam Kokesh, we're going to come back and overdrive, take a few calls for folks that are holding, but in the three, four minutes we have left, repeat what you said to me during the break. Uh, because, and folks, don't press me to say names or I will, okay, about campaign people. I didn't want to go here, but I'm not going to sit by and, and be told I've got to worship Mitt Romney. It ain't happening, okay? And it's not that I love Obama. It's just that that trick has it has worn out here. I get the left-right paradigm. I mean, I mean, it's either the incompetence or the Benedict Arnold theory. What do you think is happening here? Well, just to be clear, I think Rand Paul sold out in his heart a long time ago if he ever had something to sell out in the first place. He was never really a libertarian. He never believed in the cause. He voted for sanctions against Iran. That's an act of war. That's not like Ron Paul supporting the Defense of Marriage Act, which is something sort of insignificant around the margins and questionable. This is an act of war. Rand Paul voted for an act of war. The fact that he's supporting Mitt Romney over his father for political expediency should really come as no surprise. But what I was saying is that the actions that we see out of Ron Paul Inc., in some ways a betrayal of the grassroots, are a combination of the, I don't want to say incompetency, but maybe shortcomings of Ron Paul as an organizational leader on one hand, and the corruption of his organization by leeches and those who would subvert what he is actually trying to do on the other. So how much of each constitutes what's actually happening, it's hard to say, but at very least, Jesse Benton is a huge leech on the campaign, grossly overpaid, incredibly incompetent, but we have to see what Ron has been trying to do here. And I got to say, from everything that I've seen, and I don't have time to get into each of the points that has, has led me to the conclusion that Ron Paul was never running to win in the first place, I don't think that that's what he was doing. I think he was running to get as close to winning without actually being a threat to winning as possible and have as much of an impact on changing the dialogue and helping take over the party as possible. Yeah, it's an info war, and so this is really his plan, and he needs to come out and state that instead of, playing along like he was really moving to win. I mean, not even really fighting for Texas, California. Absolutely. And, and, and if they would just be honest with us about the strategy, then it wouldn't be as bad. Do you agree with me, though, if this is blowing up big time in their face? Absolutely. And I think that's a, a reflection of the fact that there are leeches on Ron Paul's campaign. I think more People like Jesse Benton, Trevi Olson are the ones trying to set up Rand for 2016. Maybe Doug Weed and John Tate, they want to keep the Ron Paul Inc. gravy train going so that they can keep collecting their outsized salaries. But what, what, what's more important here is that Ron has still done an incredible amount to spread the message. He has done yeah, don't let don't let this steal our victory. Don't let the mainstream media make this a big wedge issue. See it for what it is. Move forward. Don't let it be a distraction, but let Ron and all them know that we're aware uh, of what's you know going on and that we particularly uh, don't like what's happening. And it's quite possible that people are being threatened. I mean, we don't know. These are violent, dangerous extremists that have taken over our government and taken over the Republican Party and turned it into the war party. So I hear you. Great job, Adam Kokesh. Thank you for we'll listening. We'll talk to you again. Us in Tennessee, you're on the air. Welcome. What do you think of the whole uh, Rand Paul endorsing Romney while Ron Paul's campaign people were told, keep going on, keep fighting? Uh, and Ron Paul saying, go to Tampa, be respectful, worship Mitt Romney. What do you make of this? I think uh, we've been used. I think we've just been used. I feel used. Uh, and I listened to your um, debate with Webster Tarpley, and God knows I do not agree a lot with Webster Tarpley, but the way that he put it about him being a wingman for Romney, and we all know that, you know, Freemasonry has evolved into a Lisperian cult. And... Um, I think Webster Tarpley had some real good points on that. Yeah, let's do this, guys. We got Kokesh coming on. Uh, get get Tarpley on uh, for thirty minutes at least on Sunday show, four to six p.m. as well. Okay. Uh, and just yeah, stuff came up yesterday when I was going to have him on because he had to go to a TV show or something, and they, just, we didn't get it set up. But I want him on Sunday if he'll do it, and I want him Skype too because he'll try to go to telephone. We're going to make him do Skype. I hear you, man. We'll get Tarpley on. I was just thinking that myself. I don't agree with his socialist ways but he's right about his analysis uh let's go ahead and talk to evan in florida you're on the air go ahead hey um yeah i got a couple couple comments on the uh, the whole thing um it's very discouraging number one um number two i was a little discouraged when he went and even campaigned in florida because he conceded it to romney 
Um, no, he didn't fight very much in Texas, no, none in California, really. In Florida, zero. I mean, th th I, I've, been th I've been having alarms go off the whole time and just going, oh, my God, uh, it's just terrible. I'm wondering if this is gonna uh, this this is a plan to drive us to a third party and and get a really good organization going a third party. Well, it's not that uh, Ron would have even won with a third party, but he'd have got a ton of money, could have really educated people, would have been in the debates, could have actually won maybe. Uh, I mean, he was a lot better than Ross Perot, but it didn't happen. And I kept telling people they they're just keeping privately. I wouldn't say this on air. I'd say they're keeping the delegate thing going to catapult Rand and to get campaign contributions. And I'm like, that's not that bad because the campaign from Liberty will run good candidates. But then a lot of them aren't good. And I'm kind of like, well, I know all this stuff, but I can't totally prove it, so I'm not going to say it on air. And now everything I knew was going to happen in the last few months happened, and it makes me want to throw up. And I try to say, oh, they're playing politics, it'll be all right. But my gut says, you get out on the air and you attack this, or, or you won't sleep well tonight. What do you say to that? Let me just say this, Alex. Um, ben, ben Swan had a link on uh, Daily Paul, and there's one there now under the Ron Paul email thing on 6 12 And what it is, it's a, it's a reference to 11 CFR, 42 USC, and 2 USC saying that there is no binding of delegates. It's illegal under federal law to bind delegates. I know, but I told to everybody to that they, they, they will... See, it's over, though. It's over. I, that's one thing I don't have to hear this about delegates anymore. They were never going to use those delegates unless they had the majority because the media would spin it as stealing an election. The media would... You, you understand that. And I had to hear it from my own crew over and over again, and I let them henpeck me. But I told them all, I said, you're wrong, I'm right, watch, and I'm right again. Nightly news, of course, 7 o'clock tonight, and then there's the Sunday show. We're still here, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. Sick of the glow.